All right, we are officially live. Welcome to everybody who's been waiting patiently. Uh, as you can see, I'm not in my normal environment. I'm up in Napa uh, for a birthday trip for my lovely wife, and, and she so graciously agreed uh, for me to set aside four hours to come say hi to my other family, i.e. you guys, while we watch uh, what is possibly the worst TNF game of the season. And that's a high bar. Uh, a <laughs> very, a very bar. high bar. <laughs> EJ, how was your Christmas? Uh, mine was fantastic. I I had a really good one. It was pretty chill. Uh, there was some excitement, but that was mostly from folks getting gifts. None of the bad kinds of excitement. Um, got a little break. Felt pretty good. Happy to be back at it. Sorry that it has to start off with Trevor Simeon. Like Trevor Simeon is not one of my favorite NFL players. Um, you know, having watched him uh, both, <laughs> well, around the league, both for teams that I root for and teams that I don't. He. I don't think we're in for a very good product tonight. That's that's just me. Was he a bear? He was. Is that just a fever dream that I chose <laughs> to block out? When did that happen? Uh, it was last year. Like, yeah. Really? Uh huh. Oh God. Yeah. yeah, he's just one of those guys who's bounced around. Well, he's Northwestern. He was kind of local. Uh, I, I hate when people make that connection. Like, oh, he went to school in Houston. He's going to be a Texan. I'm like, eh, that's not really how it works. But <laughs> well, uh, for, unless you're Case Keenum twice. Yeah. So <laughs> or Tank Dell. It does. It <laughs> or does. James happen, Casey. Right? It's, <laughs> it's not the main point, but uh, it certainly happens. You know, pro teams that are near, uh, you know, college. I was going to say powerhouses, but then people are going to be like, you're talking about Northwestern. That's not a powerhouse. True. True story. Um, but yeah, he he had a cup of coffee with the Bears, started a couple of games. They were they're brutal. Um, and then he somehow hooked on with yet another team. But look, it is the Jets. They have been struggling at quarterback all year. We know this. Uh, you know, excellent defense, some nice pieces on offense. We like Garrett Wilson, we really like Brees Hall, uh, some other guys there. Kenny Yaboa made a game ceiling block the other day. I don't know if you saw that, but I saw that because I'm a Kenny Yaboa fan. But that obviously just hamstrung at the quarterback position. Jets fans are going through it. One of our editors is a Jets fan. He is, he is, uh, he's a little sensitive about the, uh, J E T S jets. He doesn't, doesn't want to hear about it right now, which I get. And that's most Jets fans. We, uh, knowing his sleep cycle is a new father. He might be passed out for this game. So I hope so. I really <laughs> Shout out do. To you, Jay, by the way. Yeah. Congrats <laughs> to Jay and his family. Um, but I do not believe that this is going to be a balanced game because Joe Flacco, Right. Joe Flacco, a former Jet. <laughs> right. Could have had actually a, a Joe Flacco and Elijah Moore revenge game. A sort of. It's kind it's of not a really backwards that way, but he's been playing inspired football for, you know, three and a half games. And if you go back and watch the film, it's real. Like this is sustainable. This is not chuck it up and hope. He has been playing sharp, sharp football. And that is a great thing for the Browns because they too struggled at quarterback, not as badly as the Jets, but they were, you know, not going in great directions in their offense uh, without help at the quarterback position and enter one, you know, immortal 38 and a half year old Joe Flacco comes in and has been just dropping dimes all over the place. And the Browns look like a whole new team here at the home stretch. Uh, Captain Fierce says he's at the game right now, which oh, January in Cleveland on the lake is not probably can't be comfortable right at night in the winter on the lake. Like I was there in October one year during the day and it was uh, <laughs> chilly. So, yeah, Midwesterners, man, they're built different. Uh, Jared for $10. Thank you, Jared. We're 10 and five and I can still barely watch this team without constantly biting my nails. How far can we realistically go with Flacco? Also, Tua or Stroud for the championship. Um, in terms of who to play, well, CJ's coming off a concussion. You never really know uh, with games where you're coming off a concussion. Um, I would probably lean Tua. Like, I get it. The matchup isn't, like, amazing, but I, I feel safer with Tua, um, which I always feel safe with Tua. Like, he's one of the top – I think he's still – top two in passing yards this year, if I recall, maybe top one at this point, I think he passed CJ. Um, so I feel good about Tua pretty much against any matchup at this point. Uh, as for the Browns, why can you not watch a 10 and five team without biting your nails? It's because, and this is, this is my theory on why every Browns game is stressful. They can't get through a game without losing somebody to injury. It feels like literally every single week, somebody goes down. 
and there's this constant existential crisis with Browns fans where it's like, oh, we had a shot and now we lost this guy. And oh, here's where we're finally going to fall apart. And then they just don't like they just keep not falling apart despite all these injuries. And so it's kind of like this excruciating experience where you're watching this team slowly bleed out over time, but not die. And in fact, <laughs> they're actually still like up and fighting and knocking people out. And you're just kind of waiting for for the weight of all these injuries to collapse them. And it's just not happening. Um, I think Kevin Stefanski should be on the short list for coach of the year because of that. Because again, this is going to be probably an 11 win team um, like at worst and like lock up the five seed basically this week, despite having what four starting quarterbacks this year, taking a bunch of injuries, banged up offensive line, you know, you're losing Nick Chubb in like week two, week three, something like that. It's been an incredible coaching job, and and I I think at this point I'm past waiting for the Browns to die because they're just not going to. I think this is just what they are. They are a tough, physical, resilient team that's very well coached, like very, very well coached. And as long as Joe Flacco can still throw the ball like he did last week against Houston, like th- that was that's not even vintage Joe Flacco. That's like 2012. Joe Flacco, like playoff run Joe Flacco. As long as he does that, they're going to be fine. Yeah, at the end of the game, I think it was last week, uh, the opposing starting quarterback that was mic'd up, came up and said, man, you're looking like you're 25 again. Like, <laughs> what is what is this? What are you taking? Uh, and it it has been incredibly sharp. And a lot of people who aren't Browns fans or haven't been paying attention, I, you know, I forgive you, I get it. But if you go back and look at what Joe Flacco has done, because after the first couple, I was like, all right, time to dig in. Like, is this just... You know, did he get lucky? And the answer is absolutely not. He's threading the ball right now in a way that a lot of teams are jealous of uh, because their starting quarterbacks can't do it right now. I'm with you on Stefanski. Tremendous coaching job. I think if really this was almost any other staff in the league, this is at best an A win team, maybe. And that might be pushing it. The fact that they're, you know, tickling 11 is unreal like really really impressive uh i do want to note one thing by the way um this game on paper is so horrid <laughs> that there is not an underdog special for it for me <laughs> they're giving you steph curry instead so now you can either do that or or like you you get a dax special on sunday like dax dax obviously going to be the 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 one that we highlight on sunday for this sunday slate um they didn't feel comfortable putting anybody (laughs) on the special for this one so uh well it's because you you can't bet on injuries yeah yeah (laughs) because that would be the automatic like (laughs) exactly brown's injury to a starter over 0.5 oh smash it yeah exactly money smash that button I will say again, you you can still do pickums on this game if you want to make it remotely viable or watchable for you whatsoever. But I want to highlight playoff best ball because there's still two weeks to go um, to get into playoff best ball. For all of you that are not in your championship round in fantasy, which I know mathematically is most of you, if you kind of want a, a, a do over, so to speak, on fantasy this season, Underdog does have playoff best ball leagues right now. You can either play against your friends, you can do tournaments, and how it works is. Uh, during the NFL playoffs, you know, it's it, it's drafts of six people, 10 rounds. It's small teams because it's, it's only a, a limited player pool because it's just playoff teams. Uh, but you can draft right now so that you can try to get teams, uh, players from teams that you think are going to be in the playoffs at a lower value than if you're drafting like literally right before the playoffs. Um, that's why they open it up right now for teams that are or rather for people that are that are, that are really good at prognosticating uh, NFL playoff teams. And so you kind of go through a best ball, a condensed best ball season through the four series of, of NFL playoff games. And obviously, once a team is knocked out, you can't use their players anymore. So you kind of have to be really good at figuring out who is going to go to the Super Bowl. Like last year, if you had Chiefs players and Eagles players, you pretty much just won the whole pot. And there's a lot of people that made a lot of money because they just rode Eagles and Chiefs players the entire time. Uh, so if you have a pretty good idea in your head of who you think is going to make the Super Bowl. Now is a good time to do playoff best ball uh, because right now is where you're going to get the best value on those drafts. Uh, so I guess I want to open it up to you, EJ. Go into your head. Let's make this as violently as as violent as possible. Go into your head. Super Bowl. 
AFC, NFC. Who are the two teams that you're smashing for playoff best ball right now? Ooh, uh, I'm feeling really str- I would probably say Ravens and Niners. A rematch? Yep. And do you think that it will be as one-sided as it was the first time? No. <laughs> no, I do not. I'm not predicting that the Niners will be able to topple them, but I I don't think Shanahan gets slapped that badly twice. Like, that was a drubbing. Was I, a- I will say, again, Lamar's 19 and, well, now 20 and 1 as a starter against the NFC. Usually NFC teams that don't practice against Lamar or see Lamar ever get smacked by Lamar. Yeah. And now that they've seen him already this year, if they went up against him again, like I would have more confidence in that defense's ability to to contain him. The only NFC team that has ever beaten Lamar is the Giants when they had Wink as their DC, who the year before was with the Ravens and went went up against Lamar every single day. So there's something to that, that Lamar is such a, and I know we use this word sparingly unique, but he is such a unique player Yeah. that if you're not used to playing against him, he's probably going to beat you. So uh, in the event of a rematch, I, I agree with you, it'd be a lot closer than it was. Um, but again, if you happen to believe in the Ravens or in the Niners or even in the Browns to make a crazy psychotic run, that'll be so all their fun. injuries. It'd be oh, so much fun if hold on. Goes playoff deep Flacco, playoff, playoff yeah. Flacco in Baltimore. Yeah, dude, <laughs> that's what narratives are made of, man. I yeah, exactly. It. There's I, this season has created so many of them, and I think what makes this season every season has a lot of great stories. What makes this season different, in my mind, or make it makes it feel different to me, is how long it has prolonged all those stories here we are like going into the final couple of weeks and it seems like there's more stories than there were three or four weeks ago usually by now teams are getting eliminated it really feels like a lot of those storylines are dropping off there's a lot of sort of certainties about this is going to happen that's going to happen this team's going to be nope not this season like teams are still getting rocked two weeks to go not resting starters uh, you know, stories like Flacco's probably, it, it just feels completely topsy turvy, which means everybody's still in it right at the end, which is what the NFL wants. The longer they can keep the more teams in it, the better off it is for them. Uh, but this season just won't give up in terms of creating that. What I, what we consider really entertaining content. I think the, the 17th game really like mathematically, it threw such a, such a wrench into things. Mm-hmm. Um, that it, it kind of it because again if that last game didn't exist like this would be the last regular season week yep you know and most of the spots if not all the spots would be locked up by now so just kind of giving that extra little breather week has has made all the difference in terms of kind of uh making things funky into december uh again you can use promo code bootleg to either do playoff best ball or pick whatever you guys want to do um you could do baseball you could do basketball esports golf like they have everything so if you want to play along uh tonight anytime you guys sign up with bootleg it directly uh contributes and helps the show like we get credit for that and uh that's how we put food on the table or that's how we take our wife to napa for her birthday (laughs) so we appreciate that uh sports fan 98 for five dollars thank you sportsman Uh, i don't know if you've answered this but where do you guys get the info on how often teams run certain plays like say outside zone or cover four um, so there's, I can't, I don't know how deep into it I can get, but there's a database that the NFL gave us access to, uh, that the teams themselves also use. And to my knowledge, the only people that really have access to it are the teams, the league, the people who run the deb- the database and us, and they gave us that access so that we could make content for them, which we have done. And uh, we also use it for ourselves to get fun little data that nobody else has. So uh, in terms of a publicly available uh, resource site, um, Sports Info Solutions is very good. Um, They don't have, in my opinion, they don't have the same amount of data and the ability to filter it like what we use. Um, but in terms of publicly available, it's probably the, the best you could get, in my opinion. 
In terms of consolidated data, I would agree. Uh, there are niche um, sites that do deep dives for teams, typically. Um, really dedicated fans who go through and you know do everything from the basics, which is like snap counts, uh, all the way through formation stuff. Like they literally go through and chart it by hand, but they do it for one team. So if it's your team, that's great. Uh, if it's not your team or you're trying to compare team to team, you really, uh, I'm not going to say you can't do it because you can do pretty much anything you want to put your mind to, but it, you can't do it efficiently without access to a consolidated resource where you can just say, all right, show everybody or show everything from this team all in one sheet and then allow me to sort of copy and paste that and compare it. Um, you, you can't, with as quickly as the season goes and as many teams and games as we talk about, you can't do it. It's not possible. Like it's not possible. Yeah. Uh, Scant for $5. Thank you, Scant. Browns haven't had the best X's and O's this season. Uh, but as y'all have said, we've had better Jimmy's uh, and Joe's. And now, oh, oh, God, this is so good. We've had better Jimmy's. And now we've got our Joe golf clap for you, Scant. Let's go, Browns. Well played. That's, that's, that's perfect. I love that. Also, you're correct. The Browns just have ridiculous personnel pretty much everywhere. And we highlighted that in our off-season preview of the Browns in our hour-plus-long Browns episode where we literally said they are the dark horse in the AFC because when we look top to bottom at the roster, we're like, where's the weakness? We couldn't really find it. Uh, and that has proven to be correct so far this year. Even with all their injuries, their roster has been so good yeah. that you know they're still going to be like an 11-win team. And quarterback has been the downfall now that, you know, miraculously and i think that's the appropriate word joe flacco has sort of you know pulled an undertaker and risen from the grave and said hey i'll lead this awesomely talented offense to the playoffs why not um that was the one place we had a question we were like deshaun's gonna have to play better if this team's gonna win um or dtr is gonna have to be amazing as a rookie and you know they both contributed but they were struggling on offense and they were amazing on defense and now that they have teeth like real legitimate consistent teeth on offense it's a very different looking team than it has been all year and you know to say they haven't had great x's and o's like, yes and no like some of their x's and o's have been really good stefanski's run game bill callahan's blocking and the way he coaches his guys up um and gets consistent performances out of them those are pretty good x's and o's those are top level x's and o's the whole offense, the sort of depth and breadth of the offense. No, not really. It did not click until they got Flacco's trigger man. And all of a sudden it's like, Oh wait, the joke is really good. We should throw it to him. Like, I don't know, <laughs> eight times a game, not like yeah. four or five times a game. And you start to see that personnel really come to the forefront because it's now combined with somebody that can unlock it. And that's, that's what has them. Like if you played the Browns in weeks one through I don't know, 10. <laughs> and now you have to play him again. Like your prep's going to be completely different. It's probably going to be the same offensively on your side. Defensively, you can't bring the same stuff. <laughs> like, no, you got to be, you got to be ready for something completely different. The only real constants are a, they play a lot of man coverage because they can and B, they rush miles from every spot in the defensive line because they can. Other than that, like, not a whole lot is is the same, which I know it sounds like, oh, other than that, how was the play, Mrs. Lincoln? But like, it, you know, <laughs> oh, you know it's I mean. kind of it's kind of true, but it's also a very good segue into Dane B's question for five dollars. Thank you, Dane B. How did the Browns manage to draft three out of the top 10 corners in the league? Some teams are very good at some positions. We'll just use the AFC North examples here. The Steelers are really good at drafting wide receiver. They've drafted a lot of very good wide receivers and they move on from the ones they don't like fairly quickly, which is good. Sometimes uh, not quickly enough, though. not quickly <laughs> enough, but they do move on. They do not. They do not believe in the sunk cost fallacy of like, well, we spent a high round pick on them. So I guess we got to keep them for four years. Like, mm -mm, nope. The Browns most obviously can draft corners. <laughs> I mean, that there's just no other way to look at that. Like they were good coming out. They have good coaching. They've been freaking awesome since they got there. Like, yes, yes, and yes. And there are teams with lots of other positions around the league that just draft well at certain positions. And the converse is also true. Like, 
New England and wide receivers. Like, yeah, you know, Bill just they just they play. just can't find yeah. one with both hands, even though you know better receivers get drafted ahead of them and behind them. Like they had chances at lots of guys. They just they just can't hit it. Other teams can't seemingly miss with certain positions, and it's really frustrating if your team sucks at acquiring those players either through the draft or in trades and just can't get one. Um, you know, I I could say Green Bay and quarterback. Now they traded for Favre. I understand that. They drafted Aaron Rodgers and they drafted Jordan Love, who looks solid. Now, I'm not saying he's in the league of the other two, but he's not hopeless. Like we saw a pretty good play down the stretch from him. He's certainly a capable NFL starter. That's a lot better. Three straight quarterbacks is a lot better than a lot of other teams have done uh, in terms of talent evaluation at that position. So some teams are just good at certain positions. And uh, yes, it has to do with their scouts. It has to do with their coaching. It has to do with the mesh between the two. But yeah, Browns, I, and I would just expand it to say the Browns have drafted in the secondary extremely well. Like their safeties are extremely strong too. Delpit's amazing. Yep. Um, like, you know, the one, I, don't, I wouldn't call him a misstep. You know, they kind of overpaid a little bit for John Johnson. A little bit. But like, he wasn't bad. No. You know, but like for a long time, like that that front office has just been <laughs> dialed in when it comes <laughs> right. to it. Probably by like Raiders and everything. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think he means good. Uh, no. Chargers a quarterback. That's a good one. Yeah, there's just there's just certain teams that and again, sometimes what it comes down to is they'll have a national scout who like used to be a DB coach and he just knows what to look for, you know, yep. and or, you know, he has a, a, a an area scout that has really good connections to all the strength coaches in the SEC. So yeah. he gets really good inf information on like who who's coachable, and who's not like sometimes guys, you just have to have the right scout. And the right scout will have the right resources or the right background and knowledge to be able to get, you know, certain yeah. positions dialed in. The other one I'm going to throw out there is that the scouts or the coaches or both, but particularly the coaches are really good communicators. Now, coaches should be really good communicators. They're not. Coaches are teachers. Teachers also need to be excellent communicators. And sometimes they can as a coach, very clearly communicate what it is they need, what is most important and what does not matter to them. And some mm -hmm. guys can't do that. Some guys can't advocate. They, they know what they like when they see it, but they can't sit in a room full of a whole bunch of other people and say, in order for what I'm putting down to be picked up by these guys, they have to have this, this, and this, these are non-negotiables and they can communicate those qualities very clearly to people that are out there looking for them and scouts that say, okay, I'm looking at this guy. Now, what did the coach say? Oh, he doesn't have that. Okay. I'm not, I'm not really looking at him anymore because our coaching staff is stable and this guy is not going to thrive in our system. So that clear communication is really key. And not everybody has that. Some people most obviously do. Sorry. I just had everything drowned out because I pulled up the Prime Vision on, on ah! my other tab. It just fucking blew my brains out. <laughs> I, I had full volume on that. Whoops. Uh, let me get up to the next question here. Oh, man. We had a lot of Super Chats already. All right. Yeah, they're banging. We'll, we'll, uh, Merry we'll Christmas to us. I know, <laughs> right? Uh, Echo Warrior for $10. Thank you, Echo. I may be sick, but I have been up till 4 a.m. editing a video that won't work properly. <laughs> Been there. Uh, if you're on Adobe Premiere, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. But I will not miss a bootleg stream. Also, I'm calling my shot now. Jaron Hall, NFC Player of the Week. Oh, good lord, buddy! I hope he's throwing. I love it. Times to Justin Jefferson to make that. I happen. love it. I hope it happens. I, I really like Jaron Hall coming out, and obviously a very talented offense. Great offensive coach was a former quarterback himself. Like, if there's ever a place where something wild like that could happen, that that would be the place, and I think it would be a lot of fun. Be another great story late in the season. Also, what's your video about? That's what I'm curious. <laughs> Alexander Gonzalez, who to start, Brees or Gus Edwards? Uh, I say, or I saw EJ say Brees, but I'd like to know why and what Brett has to say. Um, I kind of lean, ooh, man, I kind of lead towards Gus Bus just because I feel like, uh, like Justice Hill is going to get a lot of the work that Keaton Mitchell used to, but I don't think that he's going to eat into the workload as much as Keaton was starting to eat into the workload before he unfortunately got hurt. Not that I don't love Brees. I think Brees is amazing. The offense is going to run through him, but Cleveland at home, outdoors, on the lake, in January, against like this defense. 
I, I really don't like the matchup. Like, Brees is a better player with a horrific matchup. Gus is still a good player with a slightly better matchup. I'd probably lean towards Gus. I don't feel great about either of them. If you have no. a third option... <laughs> I don't, I don't feel great. great about either of them. The reason I said Brees is because Trevor Simeon's starting a quarterback. Like, I mean, gonna, they, they, yeah, he's going to throw the ball back. 10 times and then they're going to go stop that. Like, <laughs> don't don't do that again. And and Brees, although he is running against a very good defense that is not going to give him a lot of yards, he might get 25 carries. Nobody gets 25 carries like they're going to have to like there isn't they're going to see Simeon throw the ball and go, oh, crap. Like we got to do this. So, yeah. Uh, Nathan Woolley for $10. Thank you, Nathan. Is it strange? I'm not really worried about Brock. He didn't play incredible, but a lot of his worst plays could have been either neutral or positive for the 49ers on a few occasions. Yeah. There was like what? Three tipped interceptions. Like there was the one, um, uh, Kyle Hamilton got in the end zone. Like, yeah, bad ball, bad rep, bad play. Whatever you want to call it. Like, just bad. That was a bad play. Bad. The other three, not really. That was just more great plays from the defense than bad plays from Brock. In terms of, you know, popping the ball up, coming down with a tip drill, you know, finishing the play, like all the stuff that Mike McDonald preaches about, like you hustle, 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 because you never know when the ball is going to get tipped up and you got to be in the right position to get it. You saw Kyle Hamilton literally get pancaked and then get up, chase the play, get the pick. Like, yeah, it's more effort from the Ravens defense than Brock just having a rough night. Not that Brock had like a great night. But that was not the game that made me panic about Brock Purdy, like at all. Like I thought he had a worse game. Like if we're just throwing on the film, I thought he had a worse game against Cleveland than he did against Baltimore. Both losses, but they they were not. Like, not I equal. thought Cleveland did did a much bigger number on him than Baltimore did. Also, and by I, the way, side note: um, Can you hear my AC unit right next to me? I can't. They might be okay. able to. But... Chat, let me know if you can't. I'm curious. Anyway, go AJ. I. I don't think it's panic. This is the classic quarterback conundrum and and in the environment we're in right now where everything is, we've talked about this binary, black, white, one, zero, up, down, good, sucks, MVP, told you he wasn't MVP, C, he's terrible, right? It's this one game crazy swing where he didn't, like you said, he didn't play terrible. This isn't like he just went out there and, I mean, compare what Brock did against the Ravens to what Simeon is most likely going to do tonight against Cleveland and you'll have worries about one of them and it won't be Brock. Like it, it it's this balloon popping moment of like people waiting for the Cinderella thing to go away. And mm -hmm. he has one awful game against a very good team. It's not like he laid an egg against, you know, a team that's already eliminated. He laid a team, laid an egg against a team. Like you said, that plays the lights out against the NFC. It's probably going to be the top seed in the AFC. Like this is not bad competition. It's one of the best defenses in the entire league you know, along with the one we're going to see tonight and he didn't play terrible. So, you know, is it people like I told you he wasn't the MVP? Well, fine. He's not an MVP. What are we talking about? <laughs> he's still a top 10 quarterback in terms of the way he's played this year in the NFL. That's pretty damn good. And he still plays for a really good team. And yeah, he had a bad day, not a terrible day, but a bad day against a very good defense where a lot of other quarterbacks who play against that defense have had a, had a bad day. So panic seems like really strong. <laughs> if you look at Brock Purdy's last like 20 games, it's not a guy to panic about. There's way more good in that film than there is bad. Uh, Andy for $5 still alive in a hundred K survivor contest. Should I use Cleveland today or Jags on Sunday? <laughs> Cleveland today, Cleveland today for me. It feels like, yeah, if Cleveland, again, I just spent five minutes talking about how topsy-turvy the end of the season is, and I have been absolutely flamethrowing Trevor Simeon, so you know he's going to have his only 300-yard game, like, <laughs> ever. But, but I'm with you. Like, it it would feel, like, way out of sorts if Cleveland lost this game because they do have a very solid defense not just joe flacco showing up and you know putting up 45 a game like that's not the gig it's you gotta score points against cleveland and oh by the way now they're dangerous and can score some points too so the balance is there but it just doesn't feel like it's something the jets don't have their defense also awesome their offense just not awesome like there's no other way to describe it the one so i i probably probably didn't dive deep enough into my survivor strategy for 
Cleveland versus Jags. The one caveat that I have here is do you have Tampa available? Because I want to go into the last week with the Panthers opponent, right? Which is Tampa. Yeah. Sure. I don't like the Jags are playing Carolina this week. I don't want to blow. I don't want to blow that. Like if, if I still have Tampa available, I'd rather do Cleveland now against the Jets and then use Tampa against uh, Tampa against Carolina. Mainly because the Jags have been so shaky. Yeah. That like, I just, I'm, I kind of feel, I, I feel better about the Bucks as a team right now than I do about Jacksonville. And I feel more confident in, in the Browns eating Trevor Simeon alive than I, and, and also on the Bucks eating the Panthers than I do on the Jags doing it. Like, yeah, Jacksonville's still probably going to win. But I'm not going to enjoy watching that game. Like I, I don't. I really don't think I am. It's been rough for them this year. When people start talking about the fact that, you know, they're really worried about Brock Purdy, I'm like, okay, here's your. You should, be, you should be really worried about Trevor Lawrence. How, how you feeling about <laughs> Trevor right now? And if they're like, oh no, Trevor's great. He's wild. He's a generational quarterback. I'm like, okay, <laughs> we know what kind of football fan you are. That's cool. Like I'm not going to tell you how to fan, but like if you're not worried a little bit about Trevor and you're a lot worried about Brock Purdy right now, that is not imbalance. Like that no. does not match what we're seeing on the field. Yeah. And I, I, I we're going to talk about talent versus results. Talent. Trevor Lawrence's talent is way up there. Yeah. 100%. In terms of what's being actually put on the field this year. Yeah. I'm not sure I'd put him in the top 12 mm -mm. in quarterbacks this year. No, he looks very, very different than he did at this point last year down the stretch when he was, sharp he was leading that team he was plus in terms of points over expected in terms of he was creating more within that system than he quote unquote should have been now it feels like a little bit less and i guess there's less, injuries but still yeah and much less consistent like yeah. i don't like you said i don't feel at all sure about how that's gonna go cleveland out there for the first play A little bit of jet motion, getting forward going, get five decent yards out of it on outside zone. Um, I got to remember what the term was for it. Ted, Ted Nguyen knows this, um, where jet motion with the flow of the play, I think they call it Venus and then jet going away from it is Virgin, if I recall correctly. I got to double check on that, but they have two different names for, for jet motions, depending on if it's going with the flow of the run versus against the flow of the run. And there's different uses for that. It's basically just say. which, which safety do we <laughs> want to pull, you know? Right. My, or do we want to get a rail? <laughs> one of my least favorite topics is what something's called within a particular offense, as opposed to what it actually is. Yeah, oh, okay. it's a jet motion. <laughs> okay, oh, it's called like what? Are, what's the point? What are they trying yeah. to do? And exactly what you're talking about. We're trying to pull this safety for this reason, or we're trying to pull this one so we free this up, and then we get the the route we want. You know, the blocking angle we want. The, you know, whatever it is. So it's you know, uh, boy, you can get in a lot of mud fights. <laughs> yeah. About, well, we call it this. We call it this. Well, guess what? You're arguing about the same thing. Yeah. Like it's literally the same route. I don't care what you got taught it as. Like, what's the route? Riley Black says, good God almighty, Deshaun Watson is broken in half. Wait a minute. There's Joe Flacco's music. Fl Flacco's got a steel chair. Joe Flacco's still elite. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> it, that's what it felt like a month ago. Like, Joe, Joe Flacco's start. Okay. okay let, Joe let's Flacco's over 300 yards for three straight he, weeks. Yeah, I mean, he had some flashes when he was with the Jets. Like, he had some, he still had the deep ball. He was taking a lot of sacks. Again, the line wasn't as good as the line he's behind here in Cleveland. I mean, look at how much time he has on that third in Joku, who is tearing the Jets' defense. Third and 15. Again, th that was a, here's the thing that was a give up throw. That was a yeah, that's a they, dump. They built the umbrella. We're gonna dump it down to David. He'll get 10 yards. We'll punt it on fourth and five. Look at the protection though. Rock solid. Oh, like man. Flacco doesn't have any worries there. He can just go through, pick oh. his target. CJ Mosley got toasted on that. Well, it just looked like a lane. <laughs> that looked like an express lane through the Jets defense. You don't see that very often, certainly no. not for that many yards. All right.
right. First and 10 here. Fresh set of downs already in Ooh. Jets territory. Ooh. Oh, there goes Jerome Ford. Ooh. Okay. Uh, well, I, I hope you took Cleveland in the survivor pool, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not in a survivor pool. Certainly not for 100K. That's that's nice stakes. Um, but no, I did get to go to this little grocery store that I uh, drive by all the time. And I have said for a couple of years now, I'm, I'm going to stop in there. I'm going to stop in there. It's, only, it's not even two miles from my house. I stopped in. Great. Ukrainian grocery store. I sent you a picture. They have pierogies, frozen pierogies in a bin that you can buy by the pound. Ooh. Right? Ooh. And they have like 15 Ukrainian beers that I haven't had before uh, and like five or eight that I have. Um, so I bought a very large Ukrainian beer that I'm going to be drinking just as soon as we get to see the Jets offense because I'm sure it's going to hurt. Amari Cooper's injured? Um, that. Is he hurt? Chad, if you can, if you can clarify, yeah, I didn't see that. it before. Uh, well, I just the, saw somebody mention that uh, Cooper's injured. I didn't know that. Yeah, I don't know. Well, hopefully, it's not too serious because he was balling out last week. I was going to say he's played some of the. Oh God, here we go again. Guess what? David Njoku's a good football player. We should get it to him. Hell of a ball from Joe too to layer that over the linebacker. He knows that Ninjoku is just an uber athlete. Like, I feel like Ninjoku got s- not slept on, but forgotten about. Like, everybody was super excited when he got drafted. Like, hey, man, this guy's crazy amount of talent. Yeah, he just got that over the linebacker. Um, I remember uh, there was when- this point where they just kind of didn't feature him. And it was like, did he get ungood? Are we talking? Well, they they about- had three tight ends. Remember, it was it was uh, yeah. Con- and there was like, no, who are you going to Con- pay? Right. Hooper. Who? Yeah, it was Hooper. They drafted the kid that we saw at the Senior Bowl, whose name is escaping me right now. Uh, and then the Njoku is TE2. Yeah. And even and- back in, uh, I think it was 20. Oh, and he's in. God, easy drive. Jerome Ford scored. Yeah, I Jerome, remember it was like that was four a years Jerome ago. Jerome Ford drive, right? I mean, two big runs, three big runs. Well, two big runs and a smaller one, and then touchdown on a soft corner. And Okay. I want to say it was 2019 when I was talking to my buddy from the Browns and this was when they had all three tight ends. And uh, when I was out there and, and I was like, so like, what's your plan? Cause I think David was like a year out from, from uh, contract negotiations. I was like, what's your plan for tight end? And they're like, Oh no, we're keeping David. Like that's not negotiable. And this was like before Najoku had like really yeah, and that was established the himself. And they're like, no, 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 he's not going position, <laughs> And the production was just not there. And so a lot of people who, especially the stat watchers, were like, he's not good. He's not good. He hasn't done anything. He hasn't. I'm like, dude, it was really good coming out. And he's just yeah. one of those guys that was in a situation where they weren't throwing to him a ton. They had a lot of other targets, uh, especially at tight end. And people were just kind of like, I don't want to say slept on him, but like kind of forgot about him a little bit. And I was like, I don't know. He hasn't been hurt. Like he's been really solid and now featured. And now at this point of the season, like Flacco comes in and he's like, I like throwing over the middle. I'm a tall guy. Like that guy's a beast. I should get him the ball. And I just want to say really nice leverage from Ford there on the touchdown. Like there's a lot of ways for him not to score right there. And the fact that he caught it, leaned into the guy, and was able to twist around to the outside, stay inside the pylon, like really good understanding of leverage on the field. Speaking of Joku, is he getting first team all pro nods? Um, I mean, in terms of every <laughs> measure, six weeks stat, ago, he wasn't, <laughs> but it's, I, I would say what, what cemented it was probably the Ravens game yeah. where, you know, they, their average depth of target was like four yards or something in the second half. And it was, Njoku breaking tackles, Njoku breaking tackles, Njoku yeah. breaking tackles. Like obviously sure Deshaun throws, played well throws. with a broken shoulder and everything like that. Like he he played well considering the injuries, uh, very well considering the injuries. But it was Njoku being a fucking moose in the open field that won that game. And and kind of like reassured everybody like, oh, no, the Browns can still win despite their injuries. Like they're going to be fine. And then they just kept winning after that. And Njoku in terms of yards after catch threats has been the best yards after catch threat at the tight end position in the entire NFL. In addition to also being able to block also being a downfield threat. Like he's a complete 
weapon and in a down year for Travis Kelsey, mm-hmm. um, you know, with injuries to Goddard, um, you know, he's outproduced basically everybody like he's outproduced Kittle. Yeah, he probably yeah. will get first team all pro. But again, like the last month has really made that a thing. If we go back, you you said the Ravens game. Ravens game was November 12th. That game mm-hmm. starts a reception streak where he's only gone under six once, and it was against the Rams. So since yeah. the Ravens game, six, seven, six, two, that's the Rams game, six, 10 for 104, six against the Texans. So, and before that, it was three, five, four, four, you know, like, the usage just at the Ravens game, they were like, oh, yeah, if we throw it to him a lot, like he's a guy that can take over game, not just pick up yards when our wide receivers are hurt or like he should be honestly wide receiver two in our offense. Mm-hmm. Like, he should be target number two behind Coop because Coop, as you said, absolutely balling out playing some of his, I think the best football he's played as a pro this year in Cleveland. And that's saying something because he had the years with Dak and before he got traded, and those were good. I'm not sure that this year hasn't been his finest effort as a pro. So I'm not bumping him off the top spot, but there's no way I'm making Njoku anything but two, even in an offense with Chubb before he got hurt, Jerome Ford after he got hurt, who also has been very good. We like Elijah Moore. Like, no, none of those guys. Like, I'm putting the ball in Njoku's hands a bunch of times every game because of what you're talking about. He's physical. He's super athletic. He's tough to bring down. Not only can he block, so that just makes everybody have to take an extra half step. Like, I don't know, is he coming after me to wipe me out on this, you know, end around play? Or is he going to, you know, chip and release and then I can't keep up with him because he's too fast? Like, so it, it just seeds that extra doubt of like, it's not one of those guys that comes on the field. You're like, oh, this this ball's going to him because they only throw it to him. Eh, it's not not like that. So guy with no vowel says hey can you show us the scoreboard or even just the play clock so we can sync up by pausing either stream unfortunately um because i'm not on obs <laughs> because oh, he's not at home <laughs> okay well the big catch to wilson just happened so for we're at first quarter 10 27 on the clock um, Flat. so i'm not on obs because i'm on the road right now and we can't put it on Streamyard because Streamyard doesn't have that functionality for us to kind of crop a second window to put the, the score bug on the screen. Very annoying. That's why we typically use OBS, but because of, of the mobile setup right now, yeah. unfortunately this is, it's not possible with this one, but right. uh, we'll, so, we'll do better about highlighting which, which down and distance we're on. Yeah. Just about to take the snap at 10, 12 in the first quarter. For those of you playing along at home, First and 10 for the Jets, run to Brees Hall, and who did I say to start? You know, <laughs> he's pretty good. He's pretty good. <laughs> and he's, he's going to get a lot good. of carries. Good player, going to get a lot of carries. So I'm not yeah. even going to try and pronounce this because I am i don't speak Ukrainian. Uh, it's only 4.5 by volume. Um, it is uh, basically a 17-ounce beer, which is kind of my favorite thing. Just an odd size. Um, but this is a Ukrainian beer that I have not had that I grabbed at the Ukrainian market. And, uh, I tend to like Ukrainian beers, so I'm, I'm in for a treat. It's good stuff. Holiday gift. Is it a wheat beer? No, it's a lager. No, no, I'm not big on wit beers, but. Oh my uh, God, Brees. Jesus. It's only four or five. Uh, there's a bunch of it, (laughs) uh, but it's lager. And, you know, it says it has fun slogans that are, you know, probably trash translated to English, like the original taste of beer. Laporta has one less reception than a joke more receiving yards and more tight ends. See, so Laporta has I knew he had more tight ends. He has nine touchdowns, which is insane for a rookie tight end. You said he, he, has he had more yards. <laughs> does he have more yards? Hold on. Uh, I think he does. Laporta at 776. Because again, Njoku Laporta started off on fire. And- and Joku didn't heat up until really the Ravens game. I mean, he had, yeah, he, I mean, here's the yardage totals from October 1st, the first Ravens game until the second Ravens game, which is five straight games, 46, 24, 54, 77 versus the Hawks, 26 versus the Cardinals. And then he starts that catch streak of, you know, 58, 56, 59, 
the 17 against the Rams, but then he breaks out 91, 104 versus the Jaguars and Bears. Obviously, the Jaguars was the two touchdown game. I have to imagine all the the quarterback shuffling mm. and you know the DC. Mm. Oh, there goes Brees again. Okay, you're right, Brees. <laughs> they just had to hear what you said because they don't when, trust when me. in doubt okay. i guess start breeze matchup proof. well fuck me <laughs> it, it's not matchup proof we both like the defense but neither defense i mean it's fair to say now that they both had their first drive neither defense looks like themselves so far they're gonna have to find their footing both of them but breeze i'm did you okay did you see the pass from simeon uh did, i didn't see breeze but no Okay, the him? tail of the ball was lower than the nose of the ball. Like a like a knuckleball, just kind of <laughs> like a 747 coming in for landing. <laughs> I can't even throw a football like that. Like, I don't know how I would try to do that. It made it <laughs> like it got into his hands. You know, it all counts. It's not a not a beauty pageant, but yikes. so I really think, you know, especially if you're asking Simeon to open it up. Now he has hit Garrett Wilson for a couple of nice gains on that drive alone. So again, like I said, I talked a lot of shit about Trevor Simeon, so he's going to have a great game. We all know that it's totally fine, but it just feels like Brees is going to get a bunch of touches. And I really thought they were going to be carries, but apparently they're going to let Trevor Simeon throw four or five yard tests and he's going to have, you know, catches and carries. And again, if he doesn't top 20 touches in this game, I'd be surprised. Uh, the McPain train for $5. Brett and EJ is a wounded Packers fan. I must ask, do you have a reason that Joe Barry defense is so bad? It seems something different each week. Um, I yeah. am working on uh, an episode on that. And I literally just started diving into it. Um, and I was looking at all the explosive pass plays against them. And I, if I had to come up with like a pie chart for the three games that I'm through so far, um, and I, this is not going to be coming out during the playoffs or anything. This is more of an off season. <laughs> like why the fuck does this defense not work? Uh, yeah. cause I really want to do like a deep dive, like a 45 minute, like dissertation on, on the, the <laughs> enigma that is, that is the package. Um, uh, but if I was going to do like a, a pie chart, you know, I would say miscommunications is like a solid, like 30 percent of it right now. Um, just dudes getting beat like in space because they run a bunch of match zones and stuff like that. And like, even when it's not, Oh, I'm out leveraged and there's throwing against leverage, nothing I can do. Like, even when it's like, Hey, I'm playing head up. This is my guy. Got to carry him down the field. Like dudes just getting beat is probably like 33%. I would say so I like got another third in the, in the three games that I've watched so far. And then there's this weird kind of, of, trend where their pass rush is very all or nothing and there's a bunch of explosive plays where i would almost chalk it up to the pass rush just not getting there and then whether it's you're getting into scramble rules or you know if guys are running their routes but the quarterback's been sitting back there for five seconds and so guys just kind of break off and they get into i'm gonna get open mode yeah and then you know they, they just find like you can't cover for five seconds. Right. And so it's like the opposite of a coverage stack where it's like, this is a lack of pass rush reception. Um, that happens a lot to them as well. And it, Rashawn doesn't look like Rashawn, which is why his snap counts are lower this year. I don't know if he's, if he's really struggling kind of coming back from that injury. I have to imagine it is. Um, I would say their interior pass rush hasn't, hasn't been as good as I thought it was going to be this year. Like overall, the pass rush just hasn't been as good as I thought it was going to be. And so I would say that's like another third of the pie chart as well. It's a whole lot of problems all at once. There are some things I think they could do to, to maybe fix it, but I want to get through a few more games before I kind of dive into those. Cause I might be just talking about my ass. If I don't really, really go through at least six games of this. Um, again, some of it's Joe Barry's fault. Some of it's just dudes not playing well which I guess technically is also Joe Barry's fault as the, as the DC. <laughs> but yeah, I would say it's uh, everything everywhere all at once is the issue. To me, it really feels like Barry is a defensive coordinator. Uh, you know, that used to be the joke about failure to launch. It's not failure mm -hmm. to launch. It's failure to adapt. Oh, look at Joe. 
On the move. Oh, almost all, throwing picks. Almost like throwing picks. Days. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, it didn't get the elevation he wanted to on that ball. But with back to Joe Barry, it feels like failure to adapt. He's going to run the same stuff and say, run it better, right? Which we see some defensive coordinators around the league. That's kind of – and we see other defensive coordinators go, oh, hey, wait, like, you know, the best guy in my defense, the best pass rusher in my defense is not – getting great pressure right now so i've got to i've got to change it up i've got to bring it from somewhere else i've got to shift i've got to you know bring other guys uh i've got to call something else and barry seems stubborn oh man what is like yeah callahan's line is eating the jets defensive Ripping line we them to pieces. haven't seen that from many jets opponents this year like they're like clearly beating them i mean here they've got come on, they got one linebacker to get on. 77's like if I get that linebacker, we're gone. Yep. Wyatt knew before he's like, I'm gonna give a little chip. I'm gonna give a one-handed chip on the way out, and I've got to hit that linebacker. And if I do, I know we're going. And they went. Oh man, look out. They are just helmet to helmet on them. Uh to give you guys um a stat that I looked up. The pass rush win rate for the Packers edges is uh, the edge rotation this year is 20th in the NFL at 23.4% pass yeah. rush win rate. So again, I would say lack of pass rush has been, has been an issue for them. And, and Rashawn just doesn't look like Rashawn, uh, you know, and that was kind of an issue they had a couple of years ago was when they, when they lost some edges, when they lost Gary to the injury initially, like their defense just didn't look the same without Rashawn Gary out there dominating. And, it still doesn't look the same now without oh. even with Rashawn out there, but not dominant. Oh, oh, Flacco got lucky, lost his cleats and the ball at the same time, but managed to get it back. Uh, that's just fortunate bounce and not the kind of thing that shows up in the stat sheet, really. Um, just field let go under his under his left toe, and yeah, you know, late season games, people talk about it all the time. Like you playing outside, fields are not perfect. It's uh, dewy. It's, it's can very be slippery. Yeah. Uh, can be icy, can be hard, you know, from a frozen, frozen field, snow, whatever. Uh, by the way, it's 46 degrees in Cleveland. I looked it up. So a genuinely balmy evening in Cleveland. Uh, I think it's, I was going to say, oh, it's 52 here. So slightly. I was going to say, is that there. colder than you? <laughs> yeah, typically. Uh, well, not, you know, hasn't been for the, for the past few days, but uh, tonight is it in Napa right now. It's pretty. Yeah. Okay. 58. Yeah, it's decent. Yeah. It's 52 here. So you're oh, <laughs> much shit, closer than tomorrow, much closer than you normally are to my temperature okay. when you can oh. usually laugh and flog me with your high sixties. Apparently it's going to rain. tomorrow. Oh, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> the joke this again. Is... Yeah, but look at Flacco. Uh, totally Njoku on the on the back half of that. Again, you were talking about what a yak threat he is and what he has been throughout the season. He's showing it off there again. They're going to show Njoku on the on the on the close up here. But look at the throw from Flacco. You might be able to see it. This is such a vet. Like, oh yeah, I just got to get it out in front of him. He's going to run right through it. Did, did like, you see the catch though? He yeah. got tugged on his arm and still. Yep. Still no, this is literally hand. look at Flacco just drop the arm angle and be like, man, if I get that ball anywhere out in front of him, he's going to go get it like that. It's amazing to have. Oh, and then they just pound it through the middle. Whoa. The Jets defense is like, what happened? Did they all just like have some bad yeah. turkey at Christmas or hey, something? Man, they got their reservations in Cancun all booked. You know, I it know is, it is what it is at this point in the year. Yikes. Like this is, I'm, you know, honestly, from neither defense, this is marching up and down the field. This is chunk play, chunk play, chunk run, chunk play, chunk like. But hey, you know, at least they kept a spot for Aaron Rodgers on the active roster so that everybody oh, would feel better at practice. Smart. I I know that you are a follower of uh, one particular sports talk head who lit into Mister Rodgers. Uh, oh, they missed the extra week. point. Yeah, Bender. Oh, God. That honestly looked like one of my drives off the tee. Not that I've hit a golf ball in 10 years, but that very much had that. It's going. It's going. Oh, no, it's not. It, it looked good off the tee. 
and then the rest of it happened. Uh, uh, hot page for five dollars. Thoughts on how David Bell could help more with production and Flacco <laughs> get faster? Yeah, I was gonna say have more guys fall down, which is the one he scored the big TD on a couple weeks ago. Like he, he's that was a guy I, ne- I never saw it with him, and there were a yeah. lot of guys, especially. And this is a I don't know if it's Midwestern bias. But there's a lot of a lot of analysts who you know sort of live in that area of the country who were like, "Oh no, Bell's Bell's gonna be a wrecker. He's perfect for the NFL. He's got all the skills." Blah. blah. And I was like, oh, "Okay." And I just wasn't seeing it, and I kind of felt bad about it because there's a lot of people that had much higher hopes for him coming out than I did. And I just, you know, when you get to the end, especially with wide receivers, and you've got all your tears, and you got all the, and you're trying to figure it all out, you're sorting it out. And there's one guy typically or a couple of guys that just kind of keep falling and you're doing the match. You're like, is he better than him? And you're like, nah, I don't like him better than him. Do I like him better than me? And all of a sudden you're like, dude, I have him like 18 yeah, or whatever. And you're, and you're like, I, I must have, I, I did something wrong. Like I got to do it again. So you sort of stack him up and you start going down the list and you're like, better than him, better than him, better than him. No, 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 no. He might actually be 19th. Like, <laughs> That, that, like that, you get there way, that happened just, to like, me yeah that happened to me with one of the receivers this year yeah where he ended up being way lower in my rankings than i thought he was and i was like oh god that's gonna be a really rough episode you, episode when i try to justify that shit that's way lower than i thought it would be oh fuck <laughs> people start waiting right if yeah. that's their guy <laughs> like they went to that school or that's their favorite player in the draft or whatever they start waiting when you're doing those things and they're like, wait, wait, I haven't heard his name. We're, we're at 10 and I haven't heard his name. What in the world? I think he's top five. And then they're like, their teeth come out and they're like, bah. and you get to 15 and they're like, what in the hell? And they're just ready. The knives are out by the time you get, you know, close to 20 and you're like, Oh God. And it was like that. I took a lot of heat for my David Bell take, especially from again, people that went to his school or people that were in that area of the country, they're like, you're wrong. You're wrong. I was like, I might be, I've been wrong about a lot of things, but I, I just don't see the area where he's going to win consistently against NFL defensive backs. Again, very productive college wide receiver. I'm not saying David Bell is a bad player. He's a great college player. Anybody that gets drafted is a great college player. I just didn't see it translating to the next level. And again, David Njoku didn't, put up a bunch of stats and I was super high on him. And now, you know, situation uses. Oh no. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> brownies get it. I think brownies got uh, it. Yeah, they no, did. Brownies clearly got it. Uh, Good. This could be a two touchdown. Well, yeah, two touchdown, not two extra point. Thanks for the miss. Uh, <laughs> two touchdown lead uh, very quickly because that ball's on like the nine or the eleven. Like that if, ball's... if they go for, or if they get a touchdown here, they're probably going to go for two to 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 fix that. Oh man, I'd classic strip it. and just hustle for the hit to make sure <sighs> that he couldn't he couldn't come up and get the fumble. Again, at special teams all hustle. Uh, you know angles. Oh, Adams, great balance, great balance to slip. Get up. We're seeing that. I wonder how many guys are going to like change spikes at halftime because we've seen a couple of players slip. Yeah, so I, just, I think it's a wet, wet field out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The ball's on the 12. Mm-hmm. Matthew Adams, former bear. And I don't know. A cup of coffee, at least. Yeah, no, you're you're not wrong. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, when I said I don't know, I was looking at the Jets defense. Uh, and there is a flag on the play, but like soft coverage at the 12 what are you waiting for like i <laughs> i will accept you playing that far off if you're also calling zero but that was not yeah good. if you're gonna give it a second and wait for the the sort of hot route to come out a little flag, um, flag on yeah that uh believe that was against browns i want to say one of the blockers or opi must be mm-hmm yeah, they're just gonna call a pick on that. I I guess I I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm saying that's what they're gonna call. Yeah, it's kind of a soft call to me, but whatever. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. Oh, Flacco Ooh. deep in his reads, going just into this into the first row. Yeah, that's just to come back and play again. Uh, I'm back again. This is from Project 1337. I'm back again. How are we feeling about the Raiders D now? 
Fast God, and loose. <laughs> <laughs> played their asses off. Fast last, and loose. Last couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to package this question together with another one that we just got. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, from Toloco Badger for ten dollars, where he said thoughts on AP as the Raiders head coach going moving forward. So I'm gonna answer Project 1337s oh. and Badgers at the same time. Oh, geez, big Q. He's like enough of that. <laughs> no more successful runs. So this this Raiders defense is playing like not even playing their ass off, not even playing with their hair on fire. They are frothing at the mouth like everybody's got rabies type energy in this Raiders defense right now. And that is because of Antonio Pierce. Mm -hmm. It's the same guys, mostly, you know, that were that were on the field at the beginning of the year when, when Josh McDaniels was there. And clearly the locker room despised him, did not really want to play for him. They love playing for AP. And just the fact that this defense, this much maligned defense in the first half of the year, is now playing like that in not even just back to back weeks, but for you know several weeks now since AP took over. That I think speaks to his quality as a coach, but also his his character as a leader and his ability to get guys to buy in to play with that much effort in a season that that they never really had like a legit shot to to go on a run you know, because of the hole that they had dug themselves into in the first half of the season. Like, yeah, mathematically they were in it, but it was the longest of long shots, right? But these guys believed in AP and they were like, fuck it, if anybody can do it, it's us. And so they played incredibly hard week after week, even when the math was not on their side. And the math still isn't really on their side. Like they're they're still probably not going to make the playoffs. I'm pretty sure that there's a bunch of elimination scenarios for them this week. I got to double check on that, but like mathematically it's never, it's never been anything but an extremely uphill battle, but those guys didn't care because they wanted to play for AP because they want AP to be their coach. Like they, they want him there next year. And I think at this point, Mark Davis, like he's going to hire Antonio Pierce because he, if he, he, if he doesn't, <laughs> I think he's going to face more scrutiny than he has in the past, which is saying something because uh, Mark Davis has not been free of scrutiny uh, multiple times throughout his ownership of the Raiders. It feels like a no brainer at this point, but a couple of weeks ago, I think you could still maybe have been teetering a little bit. I think most people's minds were on a similar path at that point. Now it feels like, what are you doing? If you don't hire him, He's yeah. again got the same guys. They're coming out and just blazing people. You can tell it, there, there was all the pressure let off and release after the coaching change. You could tell that building had been really toxic, that there had been a lot of people not on the same page in that building. And it felt like everybody's on the same page. That doesn't naturally just translate to better results, it translates to happier players, which was obvious from all the locker room footage and everything else. That does not just translate to a defense playing way better in a lot of categories that matter. Like you still need to do all the rest of the stuff and they have. And now it's like, what are you asking for? Like he's done, I would say everything he's needed to do. And it's just another, it's a huge plus for AP. And I don't want to, because he was on the previous coaching staff. It's not like they brought him in. Right. And, you know, obviously he was keeping his head down, trying to do his job, but, you know, wasn't the head coach and it was not his way uh, around the building. Now that it is seeing a very different result. So I want to say all the positive things for AP. And I also want to say, you know, in a disconnected and different thought, this is like what's left of the Belichick coaching tree at this point. Uh, Flores, I guess ashes like i mean it's dust did you hear the stuff with jalen milrow today no so like the bama quarterback yep jalen milrow came out and said that bill o'brien when he was his quarterback's coach at alabama said you should not be a quarterback bill Uh yeah bill not not great stuff so you're looking at that's great for recruiting (laughs) yeah and i mean in terms of like McDaniels and, you know, 
Patricia and like, it's just all these Belichick coaches that left and, you know, didn't have as much success for the most part. Now I, again, you and I agree that Bill O'Brien pretty good head coach, terrible GM. He was enemies with himself there. Um, didn't, you know, was not ready for that power. was not trained well by Belichick for that role while he was in new England. And you just look at the Belichick coaching tree and you're like, they all did better when they came back to new England, but it was, that was the only place it's like an incubator. It's like, once you get outside the friendly confines of Foxborough, you're just, you're on a return arc. That's the only way this is working out. You're going to go get paid and then you're going to, you know, come back here, uh, having failed largely for the most part, and you're going to be good again. Um, and Browns, that's, that's it. Brown scored. How, what did I miss? Uh, for, well, first things first, JT's here. Round of applause in the chat for JT. Hello, JT. Uh, he says, hey. happy holidays and happy New Year's, fellas. Can't believe y'all go to watch this game. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, contractual we have, obligations are a bitch like that, huh? You know, <laughs> but we have um, helpers. Yeah, yeah, no. J, uh, EJ has, has alcohol and I have um, disguised alcohol, so to speak. Oh, so. lovely. Yeah. Um. How'd the Jets score? I missed that. We're going to find out in just a second. Yeah, we will find out. We were talking about how bad the New England coaching tree has fared outside of New England. Oh, they got a pick six on Simeon. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, I, I feel bad for laughing because I know there's a lot of Jets fans here, but like they have to be laughing at this point, too. The, right? I know the train has left the station on this one, but my mom did tell me at one point it didn't really stick. But if I didn't have anything nice to say, I shouldn't say anything at all. I realized that we're way past that at this point. But come on, what were you expecting? Oh, here we go. Here's a replay. Okay, so oh, it, and come on, safety never moved. Like the safety never moved. It kind of looked like they were running a Tampa two invert where they showed middle field close, and then he came down to play like that middle seam. It's like a two robber, I guess some mm -hmm. people call it where like you start out with oh. one high and then he's kind of playing where the Tampa two dropper is. And then the corners go um, and they drop into the deep. It kind of looked like a, on the replay is what it looked like, which I get it. That's a funky coverage that can get you, but dude, <laughs> Simmons been in the league for like seven years now. I don't know. Feels, feels like longer. It does. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'd love to hear JT's thoughts on that. Uncensored. Not the censored ones, JT. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I, I, feel sometimes. <laughs> I feel extremely lucky about a lot of things. Uh, being able to do this for work because of all of you is one of them, for sure. Being able to actually have conversations with a guy like JT, uh, who's, you know, obviously super knowledgeable, spent a long time in the league. Um, you all, if you're not following QB school, go do that now. You should be, you, I think you all are based on the numbers, but um, if you're not, you should for, for multiple good reasons. But the fact that I get to have conversations with like JT in, in DMS is one of the things that just spins my head regularly. I'm like, dude, I just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's part of what I get to do for work now. It's strange. Is that the first ever perk six pick six on two invert? I don't know. It's one of the only times I've seen two invert work this year. So <laughs> that's the thing is like it, it never works until it works, you know, and, yeah. and it's it's a touchdown either way. You just never know for what team <laughs> <laughs> Did you see uh, Mina using the Gordon Ramsey uh, gif a couple of weeks ago for when a when a trick play uh, does work. Uh, versus when it doesn't <laughs> yeah. little girl oh come here hon. <laughs> fucking donkey and that's the way it is right doesn't like you said doesn't work until it does when it does doesn't look good um but that's there are a lot of hits and misses in every game so one of the things i love about jt's work is he highlights like hey this could have worked this was open or this was never going to work because it was never open so you can say whatever you want about the protection or the the quarterback but where are you going to throw it like and that's you don't always get that uh, we don't have prime vision for every game so we don't get the all 22 we can't see what's going on with the coverage a lot of times um and that's you know that's a real benefit for everybody in the the modern era uh, it, you can be a much more informed fan much more easily because those resources when i started watching football they just weren't available like you couldn't get them 
Like yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't no, it a choice. Exist. It yeah. just didn't exist. You didn't have access to it. So you had to figure it out another way. Um, and now there's, you know, 16 angles of everything. And most of it, I'm not going to say all of it, but most of it is pretty readily available. So we got uh, Wildcat rollout keepers with Garrett Wilson here. Like they're pulling out every everything they got. And you wondered why I thought Brees Hall was going to get touches. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, Curtis uh, Rogers, $5 with potential college coaches, Johnson, Bill, et cetera, in the carousel. Is there a chance McDonald stays in Beemore for one more year? Uh, <laughs> Somebody's like, um, a, Ravens a Ravens fan. fan. <laughs> yeah. the, the copium has been at the max for like the last 10 weeks in Baltimore. They're like, but it does Please ignore everything yeah, yeah. going on here. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Move along. Uh, but it has happened. We have had extremely hot coordinators who we were certain were going to get head coaching, not just opportunities, but take one. The enemy for years, three years. Ben Johnson last year. Ben Johnson last year. Brian Dable, the year that he stayed in Buffalo. We were all certain he was a top candidate the year before that. Didn't leave. Right? Wasn't the right spot. Didn't get open soon enough for interviews. Whatever it was. We, we've we had this where there have been extremely hot you know, coaching candidates that have stayed for one more year. And man, are the folks in Baltimore hoping that happens with McDonald because he has been outstanding this year. Like, so, so good. I think he's he's going to be the type of coach that gets a job at a place with an established quarterback that he is not charged with developing. Because typically, like, oh, there's Brees again. Burning angles again. Oh, man, you got JOK on that one, too. Woof. Um, didn't get the first don't, down, don't but, he got, but he got points. He got points. <laughs> don't listen to me. Watch watch Gus get, like, 17 carries for 18 yards. Sunday. <laughs> just because just I said to start him. That's okay. Trust me, you know, next stream, they'll still say, oh, let's see what Brett says. <laughs> Just do the exact opposite, guys. Like, you know how this curse works. You know, the curse with me is very, is very conflicted, though, because sometimes, you know, we agree a lot and therefore it feels like, what, but then but, other times people are like, well, he said, is that, does it apply? I mean, he's near in the proximity and did it rub off? Like, and I'm not exactly sure what that relationship is with Curse. Every time you say to start Brees, though, it works out because your default answer is yes, Brees Hall is a good football player. You should do that. Oh, did they get it? I think they did. No. Oh, did it hit the line? Yeah, yeah the, the line. nose of the ball across the plane, but man, was that amazing. I mean, hey, if we're talking up punts, and I should have said this before we started, our primary sponsor, Underdog Fantasy, posted a thing today on Underdog Pickums that for every punt, in this game, they were giving away a pair of sneakers up to 200 bucks. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I reposted. I was like, I don't know that I've ever really voted for a punt fest, but kick them balls, punters. Like, <laughs> let's go. Like, let's get some people and some nice kicks. Uh, to finish the McDonald answer again, I, I think um, teams at this point, there's a trend of, hey, if we have a young quarterback that we need to develop, we hire an offensive coach. They can develop them. Um, and if we already have an established quarterback, they can quote unquote handle the offense. <laughs> you know, then we get a, a defensive coach that can, that can kind of work his magic on the other side of the ball, because theoretically, if we have an established quarterback that costs a lot of money, that means we have less money to spend on the defense. So we need a better defensive coach that can make chicken salad out of chicken shit, so to speak. Um, so Mike McDonald fits with the chargers with Justin Herbert go in there, fix that defense. You know, as long as you have Herbert, your offense should be like fine at minimum to great. If he's got, you know, good weapons of protection, everything like that. Um, so he fits with the chargers. Let's see who are the other available jobs. Um, well, that's, that's well, Raiders, Raiders is not going to be available. Like that's, that's APs, uh, Chicago, I mean, New, New England, yeah, but those are, two, those are two franchises that I think are going to be getting rookie quarterbacks. And so that oh, kind of lean 100%. They there. both should be getting rookie quarterbacks, but um, I don't know that he fits there, but those are available, likely available jobs. New England, I think, is almost definitely an available job. Chicago, I think, should be, but 
I, trust me, as a Chicago fan, I could still get wild carded into oblivion with, oh, we're we're going to run Eberflus back for one more year, and I'm just gonna my head's literally going to spin off my shoulders if that happens. But it might. Washington might have a rookie quarterback. Probably. Uh, let's see. New Orleans. I guess they're going to have Carr for another year. I, I don't know if Dennis Allen's going to get fired, but I could see, I could see Mike McDonald getting interviews there. Uh, mm-hmm. Tampa, they're safe. Carolina, who knows with, with Carolina yeah. at this point. Atlanta, I think McDonald with the pieces that Atlanta has on defense would be hilarious, but also <laughs> they're probably going to lean offensive coach because I assume they're going to get a rookie quarterback. Um, Pete's probably staying in Seattle. San Francisco spoken for. Rams are spoken for. Gannon's in Arizona. Uh, let's see. What are the other openings? Vrabel's probably safe at this point. Maybe. Well, hmm. eh. I don't know. Is Vrabel safe? I, I mean, I'm not betting my house on him, but I... Like, er, earlier don't... in the year, I would have said no. I feel like warm if we're if we're doing seat temperature for coaching Vrabel's is is warm but not like hot to the touch I think they understand that Vrabel in general again if you look over his body of work there's a bunch of good coaching jobs in there like he He would be unemployed for five seconds like I want to say that he's a great coach absolutely um they could be just looking to change flavor but that too is dangerous because the flavor you get might not be as good. Um, So I think cooler heads will prevail and Vrabel stays on as the, as the Titans head coach. And I don't think that's a terrible thing for Titans fans that might be in the stream. Like, I I don't think that's a bad choice. I don't think that's just settling. I think you're keeping a very good football coach and yes, they need to make some different moves on personnel, but they do have a new GM who apparently has a fair amount of power and ran Carthen and you know, we'll see how he stocks the cupboard. It does need to be stocked. There is no doubt about that, but I I don't think a lot of Tennessee's woes are on Rabel because he's done work uh, similar to not at the same caliber of Stefanski's this year, but similar to Stefanski's where they've suffered injuries and had players go down and still played very, very tough. Rabel's Titans teams have not given up the ghost. All right, let's see flag here. We're at uh, second quarter, 1338, for those of you follow along home. And, you know, for, yeah, for those of you playing along at home, uh, sideline shot of Stump Mitchell, drink, one of my all-time favorite <laughs> uh, position coaches in the NFL. And the uh, all-name team forever. I, you know, and I, I just, I remember him as a Cardinal. I know that dates me horribly, but. 80s? No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was it 80? Okay. Yeah, 100%. All right, first and five. The rare first and five appearance here. Guess who we're going to throw it to? <laughs> oh, no. He gave it Shocker. Up. And he gave oh, it he thump- yeah, That was kind of a funky hit. That too. was really odd. He just went up in the air and was like, let's go. Well, he he kind of got spun mm-hmm. midair. And when you here's the thing. Fun fact. When you leave your feet and you're helpless in midair, it's hard instinctually to then also keep the ball high and tight, which is why. Coach oh, no, saying, he got drilled as he was going up. Guess who? Yeah. <laughs> 57, <laughs> man. <laughs> but you saw him going for the hurdle, right? And the thing is, yeah, when you're no, leaving your at him, feet. As he leaves, right as he goes up, Mosley comes in and brings that forearm down. And that's that. Like, Jets are still hitting. They're, they apparently can't stop the run, but they're still hitting. With the exception you, of that. That's why you don't fucking hurdle, because then you won't fumble. Well, that and you won't take a helmet in the nuts, but eh, that's another story. Or break your neck or do any other scenario that's bad when you hurdle. Yeah. Anyway. I still can't imagine this. Other than Brees Hall doing Brees Hall things, I can't imagine this drive is going to be super successful anyway. So, Well, I'm not expecting any long, beautiful passes to Garrett Wilson. Let's put it that way. No, no. If you're playing Garrett Wilson in your championship round right now, I want to know. So, I'm so sorry. Like, what? what's up with you? You like, had you, zero options. You a masochist or what's going on here? Yeah, yeah. Were you not aware? Did you <laughs> auto set your lineup? Was the Trevor Simeon move like beyond your scope? 
Watch Garrett get a 60 yard touchdown here. Just he, to no, he just mossed a guy. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <Isn't> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah, but he almost oh, lost but it's it incomplete. <laughs> So incomplete, but he absolutely lost the dude. Look at the amount of turf coming up in guys' face masks. That's like the third guy we've come, seen come up with like full size chunk of turf. Oh, right in the right in the dome, man. Yeah, that probably didn't feel good. Ooh, that is ooh. Great effort by Martin Emerson though to kind of get his hand in the middle and just rake it down. I. I know I you're him. you were a Martin Emerson guy coming out. You I love me some Martin Emerson. Like between I, Martin Emerson, was it Trey McBride? Like who also was on the all EJ team? Puka. Oh, uh, there was a there was a lot of guys out here, but Emerson was one of those guys that um I was on the opposite side of the David Bell, you know, example from earlier where I was like, no, Martin Emerson is good. Martin Emerson is gonna be a good pro. And a lot of people were like, too slow, like didn't like him for this reason, you know, don't like his hips, blah, 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 blah. And, I, you know, those are all valid reasons. And same as my reasons for not liking Bell. Like, I, I can be on the other side of the coin, but I, he was a guy I was convinced had great tape against really good receivers. He had tools in terms of size. Like, he is not, I don't want to say prototypical because I don't even really know what that is anymore. But um, in terms of the style he played with it, he's well equipped to do it. His physical tools match the styles he plays with very, very well. He was, you know, forged in fires of the SEC, although his team was not particularly great. He played against all the, you know, the all world, everything wide receivers from the past two years before he came out. So had a lot of good reps against a lot of quality. Talent. Like it, you weren't short on Martin Emerson tape going in and going like, well, who did he play? Like, oh, Jamar everybody Chase, that got Justin everybody Jefferson, that got drafted in the top ten for the past all the two Bama years. Guys, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was like, yeah, all the old Miss guys. Like, sure, he's got reps against all of them, and they they were good. I liked them. Uh, Jared said, Simeon's thrown for over 300 yards four times. Don't disrespect the goat, EJ. Uh, parentheses. The no, last I, time he oh, did sorry, it was <laughs> like. We're going to have issues here. I'm going to differ. <laughs> no, hold on. Hold on. The last I time, October 2017, which I didn't even know that Simeon's been in the league that long. <laughs> I told you it felt like longer. Like, you know, uh, no, Jared, I love you, bud. Appreciate you coming by the stream all the time. Love your insight. <laughs> if you want, if you want to cape up for Simeon, we'll, we'll go a couple rounds. Yeah, man, he's, 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 a, he's a Browns fan. He's loving this happy yeah happy to do so no i <laughs> simeon i thought had more potential earlier in his career and again progression's not linear i thought oh maybe i was wrong maybe he's going to continue to improve and, and we're going to see something that um i didn't expect or certainly didn't scout when he was coming out and then he went the other way like he got out of those early reps and started to switch teams and it didn't get better it got worse and yeah it's been that way for a bit uh, Jeffrey ate this for $5 Browns and the Jets. You know, your organization is bad when other fan bases feel bad for you root for you to stop being bad decades of next level fails. Mm -hmm. and, you know, when it comes to the Jets, they kind of bring it on themselves. Like they Sometimes. put themselves in this situation. Like they're the ones who took Zach Wilson. They're the ones who went all in on Aaron Rodgers, you know, signing Lazard, signing uh, um, uh, Randall Cobb, bringing in Hackett. Like, they they did all this shit to themselves. Yep. So, like, I, I feel bad for Jets fans, but I don't feel bad for Woody Johnson. Like, no. I don't feel bad for the people that, that actively basically gave Aaron Rodgers control of the franchise because why else would they not go out and say, get Joe Flacco other than they want to make Aaron happy by keeping his buddies around and having his, his friends be the starters, i.e., um, you know, Zach, who, you know, Aaron is very fond of and, and uh, uh, Boyle, who's Aaron's buddy. Like, that's the only reason they didn't go out and get guys. They didn't want to piss off Aaron because Aaron wanted them to give those guys a chance. Well, it's like, motherfucker, we're trying to make the playoffs here. We don't have time to waste weeks on Tim Boyle. You know, you know what it feels like to me a little bit in his sort of 
recycling of trends, although it's in a different spot, is you remember, you know, eight, 10 years ago, we were just talking about Bill O'Brien uh, being both GM and coach. And at that point, like if you were a hot coaching candidate, everybody's talking about how Ben Johnson may or may not have asked for 15 million a year as the hot coaching candidate, right? And everybody's like, oh, like, but 10 years ago, eight to 10 years ago, if you were a hot coaching candidate, you wanted personnel control because Parcells had had it. And if you wanted to make the meals, you wanted to buy the groceries and I'm not coming unless I can pick my guys and teams gave it up. Like, and most of the teams that did that have all reverted. Nobody, almost nobody does that anymore. New England, I guess, but you know, there <laughs> we'll see how long that lasts. Oh, <laughs> Tipping hey, catch. it worked. It worked. <laughs> little, That's a turnover worthy play, but we we, we do not little, see it. Okay. <laughs> little tip and catch. We'll we'll go with that. Mostly because of who caught it, but you know. Uh so this is again the we talked about it, the more revenge game, right? Lots of more revenge game. People like so you know what's funny about that? That looks like the touchdown that Garrett Wilson caught earlier in the year that he tipped to himself. Uh -huh. basically playing defensive back that's what Moore did he like literally great db technique to get a hand in there break it up and then catch it and take off with it fun stuff but eight to ten years ago if you were a hot coaching candidate you demanded personnel control nobody does that anymore yeah because if you work. are a top veteran quarterback there it is there it is there it is that's oh flacco. what a catch that's flacco man that is all we touched him I don't think so. Did anybody touch him? I don't know. We're going to see. If they blew it dead, it's going to be rough. By the way, Jared says that Simeon's been in the league since 2015. 2015 which, oh, yeah, my I God, I am old. Uh, oh, man. Look at that just little oh, flick from Flacco. Just And the ball fake is good. Just the oh, flick. Man. It's right on him. Like out in front of him let him keep running yeah he has to dive to go get it oh Think he, he had a hand on him yeah he had a hand on him when he went down so if you're a top quarterback now if you're you know deshaun watson or you're uh you know and deshaun when he was being pursued was absolutely considered a top quarterback um the browns were not the only ones in that sweepstakes by a long shot or if you're aaron Rodgers and you're determining your fate basically because you're aaron freaking Rodgers, you're demanding basically personnel control. You're going to add my guys. You're going to add my coaches. You're going to keep me happy. And teams are falling all over themselves to do that. Of course, of course, there's a shot of Deshaun Watson on the sidelines as I'm talking about it. How's that worked <laughs> out for those yeah. teams, right? The teams that did it for the coaches 10 years ago, or the teams that did it for quarterbacks. Now it's the same trend, different spot head coach versus, you know, quarterback, similar importance, similar concessions being made, have to say similar results not on the positive side yeah it's just you know you, you kind of get what you pay for or sign up for <laughs> you what and, you sign up for which is we will give you whatever you want whether it's good for us or not and i think teams having seen these two most recent examples are going to be much more reticent to just open the doors and say whatever man whatever you want because it doesn't work out that way. They're going to say, you can come, but like we're going to keep picking the players. We're going to keep picking the coaches like you're your quarterback, and we want you. We'll pay you. We'll give up draft picks for you, but you do not get carte blanche. You don't get to just write a check and say whatever I want. Man, great push up front. Get that sneak. All right, first and goal for the Browns. Looking at Cleveland's line is still for the most part. Other than that big stop from Q, which was down on the goal line, so we might see another yeah. one here. Uh, Cleveland's line has largely had their way with the defensive front of the Jets. There we go. Booting it out. Incomplete. So knocking on the door of at least 27 first half points here. So our our our, our buddy Jared. <laughs> in the comments diehard Browns fan as they come. Um, and, and Jared, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. Uh, did you think at any point this season at after, any after, point <laughs> after all the injuries that they've <laughs> taken, that you would see 27 plus first half points because I, for one did not. And again, I, this yeah. game is exactly why you put Stefanski on the short list for coach of the year. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. Um, I'm going to skip down, skip down to Mr. Myrtle's for $5. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Myrtle. EJ and Brent, any thoughts on the current Bears Twitter civil war? I'm not sure this fan base survives until the draft. Uh, you should you see the been... Bears private chats that EJ is <laughs> <laughs> Or not. Perhaps not. <laughs> Depends on how strong your stomach is. Um, it's not pretty right now. And it is, uh, you know, Oh boy, it's a lot of factors thrown in the same pot at the moment and stirred over heat, <laughs> over pressure, and it is going to get worse and it is going to be really bad. I would encourage people, all Bears fans, quite frankly, to ooh, Flacco with an absolute dime for a touchdown. Fucking A, man. He's the best Dude. quarterback on the roster. I swear to God. Like, I'm not afraid of saying that. Like, I, he is, man. Are you? He's the second best quarterback in the. Well, no, he is. He's the third best quarterback in the division. When Joe, when yeah, when Joe I mean, right now he's the second best. In the division. He's right now he's the second best quarterback in what was a you know fairly strong quarterback division. Um, but he's playing, he's playing at a level that's incredibly sharp. Like I don't care who your receiver is, right there, that is a well thrown ball with anticipation, great location. That it, I don't care who's running that route, you threw it perfectly. So. You know, yeah, Bears Twitter civil war. It's gross. It's getting it's getting worse. It's heated up a lot. It's not going to stop anytime soon. None of it amounts to anything because none of us get to say whether or not they keep the coaching staff, whether or not they keep the GM, whether or not they pick Caleb, keep Justin. Like that's the main division that's really fueling it. Is like it's it's sort of divided into two camps over the past couple of days of like Caleb or Justin, and like those two guys don't have anything to do with each other. It's happenstance of circumstance. Like they just they're thrown together. Their names are always going to be attached. Those two guys don't have. Any, they're not quote unquote competing against one another. But boy, you wouldn't know it from Bears Twitter. Um, it's not gonna be friendly people are really really charged and that's the fact that you have prolonged and i mean decades of failure at the quarterback position um and you have a chance you have the number one largely probably the number one overall pick and a very good quarterback prospect sitting there and of what we both think is a very good nfl quarterback uh in a different situation currently on your roster yes it is Prone to strife. Plus, it's winter in Chicago, which means there's <laughs> literally nothing to do other than get drunk and talk about the Bears. So, yeah, things get inflamed a little bit. Eh, probably shovel snow. Come on. That's true. Well, I don't know. It's an El Nino year, so I don't I don't think actually they're getting as much snow. As they no, it there. isn't. I mean, it's still I mean, cold as balls, but... It's currently 46 in Cleveland. <laughs> yes. You know, it's, it's In not... December. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, it. I'm not sure the fan base survives past the draft either. It, it's gotten really ugly really quickly um, within the past, I would say, 10 days. It's been simmering. Like, this this whole thing's been simmering for a long time. But it really, like, I've seen the gloves come off pretty hard in the last 10 days. And it's, I just steer clear of that, try and fly above it. I, it's not helpful to me in my role in any way. I need to... I need to keep as clear head as I can and be as objective as I possibly can about it. So I, I don't need to be, I don't need to be in there in those comments every day. That's, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I will say this. I, so I have an upcoming sponsorship for a, a company <laughs> called bear mattress. And I, I told them, I was like, give me like 60 days. Cause I got to use the mattress before I talk, but I got to decide if I like it first, which so far so good. It's actually very comfortable. Um, but I was like, I need like 60 days with this mattress. I'm not like, don't just send me something and then have me like promote it. Like I need time to use it. Uh, and so I'm going to use those 60 days to also work on my bears angst magnum opus. And I'm going to farm this rage filled fan base for as many views as I can get. Um, because boy, they, they want me to yell about this situation, but they want me to yell in agreement with them. And yes. by them, I mean like the three different viewpoints that are going on yeah. right now. Whoever it is, they, <laughs> they want you to tell them that, you that, know, they're they, right. are, that they are correct. <laughs> and that they is whichever faction it is. It doesn't matter. Um, 
And it makes it very difficult to have the kind of debate that we enjoy, right? Which has some nuance to it, which has some context, which takes multiple factors into consideration. Um, that's not the kind of thing people want to hear. They are like, Ooh. this is, yeah, that was a nice oh, pass rush. Huge sack. Yeah. Huge sack. This, it, it feels like it's getting towards the Hatfields and the McCoys, right? Yeah. Where it's just like, I don't care who you are. I hate you. Like, <laughs> I just hate you. And that's not a great environment. It is going to be, you know, I don't want to say delicate to navigate because I'm going to do it the same way I do it every year. But um, it it it's not going to come without consequence, me being a Bears fan and, and lots of people paying attention to what we say about the Bears. Um, oh, tip ball. Oh, couldn't get on it. Uh, Miles Garrett's eating on these inside moves, by the way. He's just demolished. Yeah, what what we said about Cleveland's line versus the Jets' D line, the, the the converse is not true right now. Like the Jets' O line is not holding up against Cleveland's D line. Uh, Anvil C six oh. for five dollars. Uh, Brett, how much Richardson hype are you going to produce in the coming? Off season. I am assuming this means Anthony Richardson. Yeah, AR and lots is the That's answer coming more, from this channel. More than anybody should, yeah. honestly. Like even me as a Texans fan, like I'm gonna be obnoxious about him this offseason, right? Because I think he's really good and, and going to be really, really good in this league. And part of my optimism is the fact that he has Shane Steichen. And how much more evidence do you need that Shane Steichen is a very very good football coach and a very good developer of quarterbacks. Justin Herbert asked the Chargers to retain him after his rookie year where Justin put up record-breaking numbers behind a not great offensive line. The yep. Chargers moved in a different direction. He went to Philly, helped develop Jalen Hurts, got him a record-breaking deal and a Super Bowl appearance. And Jalen, not that Hurts has looked bad this year, but clearly Steichen was a not big factor in, in his play, right? And then he goes to Indy, loses AR four weeks into the year, and they're knocking on the door of the playoffs with fucking Gardner Minshew. Like, Shane Steichen can coach, okay? And you give somebody as talented as Anthony Richardson with that kind of work ethic, that kind of drive to be great. Uh, and the fact that AR, despite his inexperience in college, was really coming along quickly. Like, I think the kid's just a natural. That's the like, thing is, like, even in that first month, I realize it's only four, four and a half weeks that we got at the beginning of the season to mm -hmm. see the marriage between Steichen and AR. It was good. Yeah. Like, was, it was, was good. Was it's awesome. not like, oh, it'll be better next year. Like, if it was that level again and he just stays healthy, like, that Colts team goes on a run. They're a force. They're not, you know on the bubble right now they're i would say pretty firmly in control of that division even with what cj stroud and D'Amico have done like that first month like yeah it had fits and starts and yeah he made rookie mistakes but he also made plays that a rookie should not make um from a positive standpoint and it's not like oh well we think it'll be good like there was a lot of evidence in the first month that Holy crap, this is working and working really quickly. Waddle and Tua both expected to miss against the Ravens. Waddle, well, I thought, okay. Waddle's been dinged play. up like, I swear, every game. Like, Tua. It feels like he's been knocked out of every game. I didn't hear the Tua news until now. 50% 50, 50 odds to play? Really? I didn't hear about that at all. Well, Waddle, I was expecting to take a break at some point because he has been like consistently dinged. Well, he's uh, Waddle is the poster child for why I was concerned about Tank Dell with that frame. Right, seven where pounds I'm like, heavier. Uh, like it just things add up quicker for guys that size. Now, Tank's injury was a freak thing. Really had nothing to do with his size. Like anybody would have would have gotten. Injured well, anybody that, except right? for Trevor, apparently. Appar yeah, <laughs> somehow <laughs> he's made out of rubber for some reason. But like, in, in terms of all the other stuff that just and this is what three years in a row of Waddle's just in and out of the injury report because when he gets hit, it's it just sticks more to guys that are that size, right? And he he's kind of the main reason why I've always been concerned about guys that are that size when you're below 180, you know, getting hit by guys that are 240 at full speed or more. 
you know, like obviously he's electric and he's a great player, but like I kind of just factor in missed games for Waddle at this point because guys that are his size rarely hold up for an entire year. Devonta Smith is like so not normal at all. And and he's kind of what you hope for out of that. Yeah, and we knew that because he was that way at Alabama too. Like, which is yeah. full of killers at SEC. And he took all those shots and he even did some returning and like he just didn't he sort of belies his size. He people say plays bigger. I'd say he plays tougher than his size, like by far. Devonta's insane. Like he's just mentality not wise. Normal. Yeah. yeah. He's got the Kobe gene in him, man. He's nuts. A little bit. I love him. Bit. All right. Kareem Hunt ripping off first downs again. Browns have a chance to march down and score again and try to make this uh, 35. If that happens, first half. I've got another one of these beers in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to need it. I might. I might. Uh, let's see. Oh, we did the AP one. See, uh, Jeff Thistle for five dollars. Thank you, Jeff. Anyone else glad the Chiefs' offense looks human for the first time in five years? Feeling that Mahomes' contract, it seems. <laughs> what they're feeling yeah. is Matt Nagy. Sorry, <laughs> you know, I was trying to say it diplomatically, mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. and honestly, it's not Matt Nagy. Like, to be completely fair, I mean, it's it does lack help. of the enemy. It, it doesn't help. Like yeah. it's it's not the addition of Matt Nagy. He was there and they were successful. It is the sort of unchecked addition of Matt Nagy and elevation to OC without B enemy there because B enemy. I heard somebody and I wish I could remember who it was because I would credit them this week. Say Eric B enemy was the sheriff in that offense. He was mm -hmm. the guy that said not this way with execution, with performance, with concepts with mental mistakes whatever it was he was the guy that was going to lay down the law it wasn't going to be andy it was going to be eb he was going to come in and say we have to do this at this level and if you don't screw you, you're not playing like he was the guy that was going to lay down the law about that and matt Nagy's not that guy and it shows like it the there is a is worse like there is a significant difference in execution in their offense and I would also say, you know, you know, they've hit on the Rasheed Rice pick so far, for sure. Yes. But a lot of their other investments that they've made at the receiver position just haven't worked out. The Sky Moore pick didn't work. The trade no. for Tony didn't work. Like, we like Justin Watson as like a four. but Sure. If Justin you know, Watson's your four, I'm fine with it. He's like a kind of a sneaky four that is more productive than you think he might be, given his pedigree. But he, he catches a lot of clutch balls, like. But this is an offense where they were like, okay, Travis is going to be our one and we'll figure out everything else. But Travis isn't playing like a one this year because he's I, 34. I like, was going to say, of course Travis, he's going to fall off. Like Travis is, you know, uh, you know, coming back to the mean. Uh, oh, great play. Holy did he, did crap. He did Jermaine Johnson get, the, oh my God, he did. Okay. So he faked. <laughs> He faked, put his hands up, stayed on the ground. Flacco tried to get him off his feet, and then he went back to him, jumps that time, tips it to himself, wow. picks it, and goes back for pick six. That is a showstopper defensive play. Like, look at it. Uh, no, I'm not going to do it. Goes up again, gets it almost with both hands. Well, he did He did get him off the ground, but he still was able to reset. And then, but like, oh he didn't God. do the whole, like, I'm, he was like, hop. I'm coming now, oh, man. That is a tremendous defensive effort from a player we really liked. And again, the rich get richer, like in addition to this Jets defensive line that was already pretty loaded. And then, you know, you have a high pick you can spend on Jermaine Josh and they do. And you're like, okay, now what are you going to do against that defensive line? Like that is an extremely athletic play standing up off the edge, basically in wide nine alignment. Comes in veteran quarterback and basically sort of out duels Flacco and takes yeah, it back. He, he thought he was going to get him with the pump and just didn't. That's a that's crazy a, play. That's impressive. Like straight up. And that like Jets fans know this. Like that's what's kept Jets the Jets in games. Hasn't been their offense. Hasn't been Garrett Wilson or Brees Hall or anything else because they just they struggled so mightily at quarterback throughout the year. Like. It's the defense doing stuff like that, which is just insane. That's kept them in games. 
Uh, JJP, back again for $5. Thank you, JJ. I thought for a while Bill's disciples should go to the college game instead of the NFL. I think McDaniels would do much better in college. I would have said yes five years ago, but now that NIL is a thing, if he's an asshole to college kids, guess what? They're going to transfer. Yeah. And they'll go get paid somewhere else because the transfer portal means yeah. that coaches has, that coach like McDaniels yeah, it's will level lose the guys. Yeah. yeah. So and, he, he can't and be good on him for college. that. Like this is a long time coming. It should have happened a very long time ago. And it gives agency to college athletes who let's be completely honest. They've been professional athletes for a long time. They have been getting paid for a long time. They have yeah. been prepping at a level that is commensurate with being a professional athlete for a long time but they haven't been able to truly be compensated for that or have agency to be able to choose. The NCAA has made sure that they would lose years, lose eligibility, have to sit out, like get older, which is a downside in this particular ball game. Now they can do it when they'd like, they can go where they'd like, they can get paid what they like. If they're not happy with it, they can leave largely without consequence. Like this has been a long time coming. It is, decades overdue and for everybody that goes oh it's not going to be the same well that's good the way it was was kind of crappy and if you were an athlete it was really crappy and i think well first of all nil is not perfect and the transfer portal is not no. perfect because kids are getting <laughs> lied to oh, like it's a, it's, it's a huge problem where kids are getting lied to they're signing bad deals to the point where they're signing these contracts where these ni are not the, the these like companies that are approaching these kids Completely predatory, super predatory. Like they're basically like getting entitled to their NFL salary for 10 years. Like it's it's gross. Like these kids are yeah. getting taken advantage of and the schools need to do a better job of limiting that or at least insulating these kids from signing these bad deals that like somehow are legal. But I I really wonder how they're legal. Um, but I do think that overall, the the transfer portal and NIL has been a good thing for college athletes, even though there are bad things that are happening. There just needs to be a, I don't want to use the term regulation, um, reigning in of the bad <laughs> actors that are taking advantage of these kids. Uh, but when it comes to, to coaches, they have to change how they coach because the players actually have power. Now I would actually argue that college coaches have less power over their personnel than uh than nfl coaches do because like in the nfl when you sign a contract you can't like one year into your deal into your rookie deal you can't just be like well i'm not getting playing time here like let me go see what the commercials are gonna pay me <laughs> like that doesn't exist whereas in college like if you're not getting the play time you want as a true sophomore and you're at like tcu or whatever you can say oh let me go see what spots arkansas has open and you could just go there you know, so it's uh, and get paid for it, too. So I would say it's harder for a guy like McDaniels to be a college coach than, say, five years. Yeah. Ago. And it's funny. We talked uh, directly with athletes for the last two years at the Shrine Bowl about NIL. The first year we NIL was super new and not a lot of people had experience with it personally. And, you know, people were kind of more, um, I'll just say, neutral about it. Uh, the second year, they were still neutral, but they were more um, defined, I think, about the positives and negatives. They were like, mm -hmm. it works for who it works for, and it's definitely going to hurt some people. And here's the people that it will work for, and here's the people that it's not going to be great for. Um, and, you know, we can go Ooh. into that. You can actually hear some of that in the in the interviews we did. If you go back to either the Clips channel or most of them are uh, cross-linked to the Bootleg channel, uh, if you want more detail about that. But. Sam McKenzie just gave us 20 bucks for a super chat and I want to get to it. Could you elaborate a bit more on some of these shady NIL deals that are exploiting athletes? This is the first mm. I've heard about it. Um, the worst one, the athlete is suing the company, uh, shell company that created the NIL deal that basically said, we get a bunch of your NFL money for, I think it was 10 years, 10 years. Yeah. It was like yeah. 10, 10 percent. Yeah, of their we get like salary. 10% of whatever money you make in the NFL for 10 years. And he signed that as a college athlete, not even being drafted. Like that's not like everybody that's looked at that deal. It doesn't matter whether it's lawyers, judges, uh, 
advocates for what we'll call like straight up NIL, NIL deals that are are well done and professional because there are those as well have gone like none of this is legal none of this should have passed muster like nobody should have signed this somebody should have looked at this besides a 19 year old oh kid. yeah it was Jervin dexter that's who it was yeah or, or javon is it javon dexter it's Jav every it's spelled gervin everybody in his life says javon like his high school coach, his mom, like everybody says Javon. And I was like, are we talking about the same guy? How and then I realized, oh, that's just how he says his name. So I've transitioned because look, man, I, I will call you whatever you want to be called. Like it's your name. And everybody calls him Javon Dexter. And I'm like, okay, like Javon Walker. I'm just Javon Dexter. I was like, okay, sweet. But yeah, yeah there's yeah, some, his, his there's some really ugly deals, but that isn't even the that's probably the most high profile one that's been like daylighted that's out there. And now that it's because it's in court, there's, you know, discovery and all the details are getting out there. Um, when you talk to agents about this stuff, uh, oh, there's, we've heard some wild shit. <laughs> if there's we talk about it, there's like, worse. Like Let's just actual, say like, that is illegal. That is fraud. People are going to prison. Like that's 100%, 100%. you know, it's bad. So there is worse. Let's just say worse. And it is the wild west because it is not regulated. And you said there needs to be some sort of holding down of this. It's true. The problem is uh, none of the actors that have the power to do that have any interest in doing that. Like the schools don't have any interest in regulating NIL. They have interest in promoting NIL and some schools do a very good job of that. UCLA in particular has an entire program and staff devoted to signing and gaining NIL sponsorship. And they use that in recruiting. Come here and you can leverage this arm of our institution to get yourself better deals. That's a good thing, but they don't have any interest in regulating it. <laughs> right now they might have somebody that would review it, but that also brings in liability for the school, which they don't want or need. So the people that have the power, the NCAA and the schools to do that, don't have any interest in doing it whatsoever because the NCAA has been nothing but hands off about this. Browns are going to score again. <laughs> oh, there goes Jerome. God, what? Okay. So three points here. Number one, Elijah Moore took a nasty looking hit when he went to the ground before the commercial break. And it looks like he's up and walking, which is great because that looked insanely scary. Yeah, I have good. to assume he's not coming back for the game, but it looked very, very bad. And I'm happy to see he's walking. Second of all, holy shit, Joe Flacco got out of a gnarly looking. It looked like a face mask there and still was able to get his eyes up and make a play. And then third, Jerome Ford. My God, dude, go off, son. Have a have a night like. Here's the funny thing is I had Damian Pierce fourth and Jerome Ford third. The I had camp. Jerome Ford fourth in that running back class. Um, might have, actually, might have been third. I think you had him. I, I had, you, I had I don't think walk, you had and him. then I, I, had, I had Kenneth Walker one, and then I had Brees and Jerome as in the same tier. Right. Like, I don't I think you had really him lower than third. Um, no. I no, went was, back and I felt. Early on with Damian Pierce's success, I was like, oh, man, I should have had Pierce higher. Like, I love Ford, but I should have swapped those two. Not that it really matters. This is a draft obsessed guy talking about draft rankings, which are just about as useless as the paper they're printed on. <laughs> but I was like, and it was just largely because Ford hadn't had the opportunities behind Nick Chubb, who before the injury early this year, rock solid. Jerome Ford hadn't had a lot of touches. Damian Pierce had gotten a lot of run as a rookie. And I was like, man, I should have been, I should have been braver on Damian Pierce, which was largely my take. Not that I was wrong about Ford, but that I should have been braver about Pierce. Well, <laughs> Pierce kind of, you know, splitting carries with Singletary this year. And Nick Chubb, the iron horse, goes down with an injury, and Ford steps in and plays the freaking lights out like jerome ford has been everything and more that we hoped for both as a runner and a receiver like as a starting caliber back which is why we had him in our top five in the first place like we saw that talent um guy that started at alabama that transferred to cincinnati like very very talented back and 
I gotta say the last like two thirds of this year, I was like, oh yeah, so Jerome four third, not bad, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> it's good. Uh, that's just that's the fickle whims of NFL landing spot fit opportunity. Let's just call it opportunity. Um, and Ford's been awesome since replacing Chubb. Like awesome. Yeah, we're gonna get a flag uh, on that. Jeff Thistle said, "What odds would you give my Huskies in the Final Four playoffs?" Um. Let's go. I that, so here's the thing that playoff game with Texas. I think that's like a 45 42. Like, oh, yeah, I, there's d- defense will be optional in that game. I don't expect <laughs> either team to stop anybody. It's going to be the total opposite of, of Michigan Bama. If I'm Washington, do I want to see? Let's just say Washington wins, right? And they get through Texas, which is not easy to do. Um, and, and you got to go up against either Michigan or Alabama. Mm-hmm. This is going to sound insane, but I, I would rather play against Michigan. Oh yeah. Mainly In terms because of match, I, I, yes. I have not seen anything from JJ McCarthy that makes me think he's going to keep up with Penix. No, like and shot that's shot. honestly, that's just an old school Rose bowl, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. It's just an old school Rose bowl. Um, and you you have to realize as a subset that over the past like three weeks the trash talk between Frank and I has been oh fervent I'm legendary yeah <laughs> fervent. However, Frank as an astute evaluator of talent, I'm not not going to say anything other than that because he is very good at that. Did give a begrudging, yeah they good to the Huskies <laughs> the other day, which you know boy knows ball absolutely uh, and you know, is acknowledging like that's going to be a fun game. I don't think it's going to be defense optional. Both teams have defenders that a bunch of defenders that are going to get drafted. I think actually the defense that plays better, not great because again, going against two super high powered offenses. um, I think the defense that plays better and both, both defenses again, have impact playmakers that can make a difference. That could be the difference in that game. I think it will be the difference in that game, quite frankly. Uh, Miss Super Chat from Guy with No Vowels. Well, it's 27-7. Well, (laughs) not anymore. Uh, So, bigger game (laughs) update. The Pistons have blown a 19-point lead in the third. They're one more loss away from a record 28 straight. Well, technically, they already have the record for consecutive losses. This will just make it worse. Also, (laughs) nobody should be surprised by the Pistons blowing a 19-point lead. Uh, in fact, I'm sure the Ooh. odds when they were up by 19, it's still probably like. OK, plus Elijah Moore whatever. going to the locker room. What the hell is Trevor Simeon doing back shoulder throws on the run for like that look like this? Stop. Like, yeah, but he completed that ball. That's like what style points, baby. Where was that? Oh, man. Can't look handle at Trevor Simeon. Yeah, you can't handle Trevor Simeon. This is a great throw. Like, great throw, really good catch. Like, beautiful location. That is a textbook back shoulder throw. Like, textbook. Against good coverage, I should mention. Like, that's that's not bad coverage. The guy was right there with him. Hit the hip. <laughs> From Joel. Joel Hoisington for $5. Mike McDonald sucks, Brett. He gets carried by elite talents. Yeah, right. Gee, you, somebody, somebody's a Ravens fan. <laughs> you hope that people are listening right now. Say it loud. Oh, boy. I, just, I love Ravens Twitter just constantly trying to gaslight everybody. <laughs> no, no. McDonald, super inconsistent. You don't know. Everybody just look towards the He's offense for Carried one. by Jadavian Clowney. <laughs> Isn't it so fun that Ravens Twitter can now go, look at the offense. Yeah. Like, look at how diverse Todd Munkin's offense is. Don't look at Mike McDonald. <laughs> I love Take it. Munkin. Take Munkin. Take Munkin. Yeah, right. <laughs> the sacrificial Munkin. That's funny. <laughs> Becton, I mean, to be fair, pretty much everybody gets whooped by Miles Garrett, especially if they're taking him one on one. Becton's like, getting killed. Becton's right? getting just routed. Like, there's no other way to say it. He's, that's like his also, fifth, like, blown rep. The physics of Miles Garrett as somebody who's 6'5", 270 no. plus to Completely get that low, have a 200, you know, no, not 200, uh, 300, 300. 300 guy <laughs> leaning on his shoulder and for him to still stay up on his feet and continue arcing 
and like rounding that corner. Like, and that just completely levering him off. No, I mean, it, Miles Garrett hasn't made sense from a physical standpoint since forever. Like, he he is one of one. You can say that he's not the best edge rusher. I will hear arguments for Micah. I will hear arguments for TJ Watt. I'll even hear arguments for Nick Bosa, who is also a physical freak. Like all those guys are physical freaks, but like at different in different ways. But you cannot say that any of those guys, including Bosa, is on the level of Miles Garrett in terms of, you know, usually so you know this. I used to work in cycling and mm-hmm. there was a triangle. And it was light, strong, cheap, pick two. No, that's the only qualities you get. Yeah. So <laughs> you can have light and strong, but it's not going to be cheap. You can have light and cheap, but it's not going to be strong. Right. Miles Garrett is the full triangle. Yeah. Like big, fast, bendy, skilled, talented, powerful. Like just keep throwing adjectives out. He's all of them. His spider charts a circle. Yeah, he's got great (laughs) size, really good length, incredible power, good technique, tremendous speed, burst, instincts. Like, you're just like, yes, 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 yes. Jesus, like, what is this? A build a player? And the answer is, "Uh uh-huh. Yep. If you were going to build an edge, you'd build Miles Garrett. Like, that's what you'd end up with. The only other guys that I've ever seen, like, physically, that are like him or JJ Watt and JJ Watt, like going back like the last, I don't know, 15 yeah, but years. Like JJ, even JJ was amazing. And I know he's your favorite all time player in the NFL. He he wasn't as bendy, but he was, he was big, not but, as bendy, right? He was, he was still, he was six, six, two ninety five and still playing massive. Edge, he you was know? massive and he was fast. And he had great instincts, tremendous power, like, maybe even greater power than miles and that's saying something yeah, but he was he, he had better power but he was nowhere near as bendy like ever yeah. yeah and miles is and that's the thing that defies physics is like jj jj Watt defied a lot of physics in his day trust me but like he again you got one less box check and and you just go down like many of the greats at that position in the nfl like they have one or several less box checks than Miles Garrett. Yeah. And you're just like, what does he not have? And you're like, nothing. He's got stats, production, plus all the physical stuff we just talked about. And he doesn't have yeah, a defensive player of the year award. So maybe that'll uh, end, end sometime soon. It should. It really should. When you go back and look at his tape and you look at what offenses have to do against him so that he doesn't do what he's doing tonight one-on-one against Becton, because if that's your plan, if your plan is Kai Becton one-on-one versus Miles Garrett, you get what you get. You don't get to get upset. Like, no. that's it. Um, Next super chat here, Nicholas Coyote, $2. Hey, guys, uh, why do my Seahawks look incompetent for three quarters? Um. The the Seahawks and the Eagles have a weird similarity in the sense where a lot (laughs) of fans are going to hate you. I know, but they, I mean, shit, we saw it a couple weeks ago or less than a couple weeks ago when the Seahawks and Eagles played against each other, where it felt like both teams ran their offenses out there and said, Gino, go find your freakish athletic receiver from Ole Miss and see if you guys can make something happen. Jalen, why don't you go find your freakishly athletic receiver from Ole Miss <laughs> that played together and, and go see if you can make something happen. And whoever does that better is going to win the game. And that's kind of like how the Seahawks are. Like they're very similar to the Eagles where they just rely on Geno and Tyler and DK and K walks. You just go out there and just make shit happen. Like nothing's easy. <laughs> for this team and when it works it's great but that's very inconsistent and they're not doing it as consistently this year as they did last year which is why their red zone offense for the majority of the season has been totally shitty and why their third down uh offense for most of this year has been really shitty i swear to god if you give the rams or uh, the seahawks receivers to sean mcbay he would use them a hell of a oh god 
Oh, now you're just starting. So, A, Eagles fans hated you for this comparison when you started. And now Seahawks fans are really pissed because you mentioned the Rams. You just they're, throw the Niners in there and you're going to Tell me I'm wrong. Full tell on. me I'm wrong, man. You're not wrong at D- all. DK would go into knows. Kyle Shanahan's doghouse and then come out with a 2,000-yard season. Like, that's what right. would happen. <laughs> the The only thing I want to see the next time the Seahawks and Eagles play is uh, some, like, old school like nwo shit where like aj and dk just at halftime come out in like black jerseys and they're like <laughs> we're on our own team we're playing for whoever we want pull out the chair and start going for it like that would be fun mm. um is it gatian gatian uh larole said julius peppers was 6 7 285 and ran a 4 7 garrett is on that level yeah julius i would put up there as well yeah who is a that, that the hall of fame as a matter of fact just announced yeah. yeah and rightfully so like if you don't want to vote for julius peppers to go to the hall of fame you yeah didn't watch <laughs> like yeah you <laughs> miles garrett's a modern and julius peppers you're you're correct 100 percent. well my favorite thing is like and people laugh at this but like Julius Peppers basketball highlights at UNC. Oh, he just bullied people. Yeah. He's crazy. He, he played with a guy that now coaches that I knew that, um, you know, went to was a was a point guard named King Rice. And uh, so good times. Um, let me get down here to the next one. Want to work our way through these during the half. Uh, Jeffrey Battle for five dollars. Thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, been a fan for a while. Jordan Love scare you. Uh, so my initial answer is yes, but I'm not sure how much yet. It scares me because every now and then you see it. Yeah, I was going to say at times, I think is the proper answer to this question. It's not all the time, but it's not none of the time either. And but, he there, had a but there's some jump scares in there, you know, yeah. where and like he, he, he appears stretch. behind in the mirror and he's holding a knife and you're like, ah, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> and that lasted like a month, which is a long jump scare. Yeah. Um, and strangely, we had that question earlier about Joe Barry's defense, like Joe Barry's defense during that period looked a hell of a lot better. Strange when you're playing with a lead and you know, you can score some points, the freedom that that gives a defense to operate. And when that sort of, receded a little bit oh now everybody's pissed about joe barry <laughs> like so the answer is at times hell yeah like he can play now can he create that level of play consistently with dc's scheming against him and plenty of tape he might be able to do that with lafleur as his head with lafleur as his head coach so you know at times yes his, his deep ball accuracy has gotten better throughout the year, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say decision-making under pressure has gotten better throughout the year. Yes. Pressure was a thing. Like, again, clean, amazing. With pressure, not amazing. And that has generally improved. Gotten gotten better. Again, inconsistent, which is a young guy with less than a season's worth of starts. Well, almost about a season's worth of starts now. So, again, I'm willing to give him little bit of a pass there um but i have seen enough where if i'm the packers and let's see what do they what pick do they have right now i'm pretty sure it's like the middle of the round uh so right now they have the 12th pick i have seen enough from jordan love where i'm not in the group of teams where it's like we got to trade up and go get Jade daniels i'm not i'm not no, no and i'm no. not in the group of i don't put the packers in the group of teams where it's like do we not reach, but do we consider a Bo Nix first round? Pick? Yeah, I was waiting you know, for I, you to say Nix. One guy, and you matched it. That's so funny. But I don't. I don't think I'd put the Packers in that group because no. of what Jordan Love's done this year. I'm. I'm totally good with running it back, giving another year, seeing what's happening with him because he's looked better than Ritter has. Oh, like, I, have, I have more hope about like, Love. Not than even in the same category. Um, he's. Let's see. What are the other uh, quarterbacks that? that we kind of came into the year saying like, uh, eh, maybe, um, how here's the thing. He hasn't had the highs of Howell, but he hasn't had the lows either. Well, what undid Howell in Washington and you and I were talking about this earlier today, uh, is his inability to get off the negative plays. Like teams will take negative plays for a while. Um, yeah. this reminds me, did you ever see point blank the movie gross point blank? Mm-mm. 
Oh, okay. Go watch Gross Point Blank. Okay. Fabulous film. <laughs> There's a great part in there for, for everybody in chat that saw Gross Point Blank. For a while <laughs> is the key there. Uh, and Howell couldn't get off. He couldn't get off the big time negative, the what we call explosive plays for the defense, right? Big interceptions, fumbles, like just super bad decisions. And when you have that much arm talent, that much leg talent, and you can make, again, high highs for your offense, but you can't limit the highs for the defense that you're giving the other team. Teams have a tolerance for that, and it goes like, hey, he's new, he's learning, it's his first season. Okay, he's got to limit these. They've got to start going down. They're not going away. Stop it. Okay, he didn't stop it. We're going to bench you. Like There comes a point where those just add up, and that's what Howell couldn't. Yeah. He he kept making the big time offensive plays, but he kept making big explosive plays for the defense too. And teams can't do that forever. It's not a winning formula. Yeah. At some point, if you're on the yeah. roller coaster, like you gotta you gotta even out a little bit. At some That's point. right. He never, he never did. Uh Johnny Boy said, uh, Brett got my dad the 12 year Japanese whiskey you were recommended. Thanks for being sexy. That was the Yamazaki 12. Uh oh, for yeah. those that are that are wondering in our uh, in our little gift guide episode that we did and yamazaki 12 is incredible and i know your dad's gonna enjoy it so happy to hear that uh willis says uh where did you end up going to napa i just got into napa about an hour <laughs> before we started this stream <laughs> so the and, answer is uh, nowhere <laughs> nowhere yet uh we just drove up from uh from monterey today uh, and my wife's off getting a massage She's like, okay, you do your sports thing. I'm going to go get a massage. Said, sports cool. ball. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. For everybody you, in the chat, I tried to trade spots. I said, I'll go get a massage, Nick. <laughs> you can do this. And she was like, how many points do they get for a touchdown? And I was like, okay. no, no, no. Her exact words were, so like, what's the points that you get for a score? <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> so uh, I relented. I'm here doing a Trevor Simeon game. And your wife is off <sighs> getting a massage for her birthday, which is fantastic. Uh, how much worse is Watson with Flacco doing better? I, 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 like I said earlier, Flacco has played not even by a little, like by a lot as the a best lot. quarterback on that team. This like year. It, yeah. It's not close. He's got like, like 300 can... yards in the first half. Um, his, uh, the stat they popped up over the last month, his 1300 and whatever yards are the most in the NFL. Since he's started. Yeah, I, I the last over the last four weeks, thirteen hundred well, yards. Yeah, because that translates to over a seventeen game stretch. That translates. <laughs> That's to, always fun game. What like fifty six hundred <laughs> yards? Yeah, it's pretty off the chain. Um, so you know, it's not close. Like let's no. let's not mince words. None of the other three starters for the Browns were touching that level of efficiency. Watson was close in win percentage, but if you still think QB wins are a stat, kids, you probably aren't a bootleg follower. We don't believe in QB wins. QB wins are vaporware. They don't exist. They're not a real stat. Um, if you look at like quality of quarterback play, decision-making throws, choices, results, like Flacco is the best Browns quarterback, period. This and year. also the cheapest. <laughs> so, that is a, a wonderful bit of circumstance for cleveland sure. well i don't know he might be a little bit more than dtr but you know he's a rookie maybe that. maybe uh let's see to loco badger i think the raiders are about 10 years behind you can't convince me that josh mcdaniels did not have personnel control well we know that gruden did well sort of kind of like we're not Apparently entirely sure he where had, the... he had 49% and the GM had 51. We're, the GM being Mike Mayock at the time. Yeah, yeah. It was Here's Mike my Mayock, thing. So I don't Apparently know where... the tiebreaker was Mayock's, but not by much. I don't know where in the draft, though, because uh, clearly the early picks were Gruden picks. Like, no shit. Because Mayock was obsessed with Max Crosby. You're telling me that John Gruden sitting in his office grinding Eastern Michigan tape? Like, bullshit. No, I, no, I don't. I don't believe that for a bit. But, but I don't I, know where the where the line of demarcation was, where like there were Gruden early picks into Mayock late round picks. I'm not yeah. saying that Mayock was a perfect GM, but like some of those picks had Mayock all over them. 
And yeah, I say and that as somebody who like worked with him at NFL Network, like I know what his types are. Max Crosby yeah. is Mayock's type. Yeah, and it that's the thing is like whenever you have GMs and coaches, and we've said this multiple times on this podcast, um, when they're not in agreement, you're not going to win. I don't care who's right. <laughs> if if you have those two forces pulling in even kind of slightly different directions, you're going to end up with way more misses in what is already an exercise fraught with a lot of error. So. <laughs> Jared. <laughs> Jared says, Brett, I say this was love. That beanie makes it look like you're wearing a bald cap from Spirit Halloween from a distance. Again, coming from a place with love. Of course it is, Jerry. We, we realized he would. He doesn't have his bootleg hat. With all due respect, you look like shit. It ain't all the bootleg hat. Yeah. It ain't the bootleg hat. Uh, no, I forgot my bootleg beanie. I, I, I realized you wouldn't be wearing that. Well, I have my my bootleg hoodie, but it is a million I, degrees in this hotel room. So okay, yeah, not a not a good choice then. But I did bring it. So. Oh look. Oh, look, a Brees Hall run. <laughs> Brees Hall chunk. This is why you never listen to me. Oh, this is why when I it see. comes to like fantasy, it's so funny because EJ like doesn't do anything for fantasy ever, but his hit rate is way higher than me on fantasy. <laughs> Just listen to it because EJ's general like modus operandi for fantasy is like, I don't know. He's pretty fucking good. You probably start him and like it always works. It always works. So just listen to EJ. It doesn't always work. I used to play fantasy. I just don't have time for it anymore. And and I, I really have a lot of respect for guys that create uh, really in-depth fantasy content. Like our colleagues, Hayden Winks, Josh, like they, they go to levels of dissecting every aspect of those numbers. That is, is really good. Like their, their content is, incredible i watch their content um i just don't have time for that with everything that we do like i can't do that and do it well um on the other hand yeah yeah uh, keeps me out of a little bit of that paralysis by analysis and i'm like i don't know man like i don't know it's prime for a good season like so i could be flipping about it because i don't have like a hundred thousand dollars riding on my survivor pool <laughs> so means less oh. We got an Izzy Abana can deciding. Let's go. I was going to say, speaking of guys that folks liked, that was your guy. There's always money in the Abana can to stand, EJ. The Abana can stand, <laughs> yes. Uh, which sounds like the best country in the world. <laughs> Where are you vacationing? Oh, I got a, I got a spot on the coast in Abana can to stand. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing this time of year. Uh, Mr. Myrtle. E oh, wait, no. We already, did, we already talked Bear Civil War. I already talked Bears of War. Where was the next one that I had queued up? There we go. <laughs> JJP. I love you. What? <laughs> Scroll down, down to the most, most recent. All right. We'll, we'll come back to Just. We'll come back to uh, JJP. When I first clicked onto the stream, I said, who's the old man filling in for Brett with EJ? The beanie makes it look like old man Hollywood makeup. <laughs> Thanks. JJP. <laughs> come on. Top rope. Love it, man. Love it. Keep it up. Uh, that's firm awesome. but fair. Firm but fair. <laughs> all right, just for five dollars with all the recent Caleb rumors. How much would it cost Washington to trade up to uh, one or two picks? Uh, when you say recent Caleb rumors, is there a specific thing I should be? Uh, boy, because anytime I talk to somebody who's like around the USC program, they always tell me glowingly, like he's the fucking guy, like. He's the man. First in, last out. High work ethic. Everybody loves him. Oh, like so. Uh, you know what are these rumors? Oh man, Brees got out of that one. Did you see the pitch from Simeon? I did. That, that was incredibly dangerous. Let's just like wow. We all still have our eyebrows. That's amazing. <laughs> Garrett I, almost. Garrett almost. I thought he had him it. too. Look at that. Yeah. Just wow. I thought he had it. That's um, crazy. But yeah, on on the subject of Caleb. I'm just trusting the people that I've talked to about him that like are in the building and like around him more that yeah. say that he's awesome. Like, I, I don't know what the rumors are about him or anything like that, but I've from the people that have worked with him, I've never heard a bad thing. The only like kind of sketchy things that I've ever heard are not even about Caleb. It's more so about like 
the people Fam- that counsel Caleb. Stuff, yeah. yeah, that counsel Caleb on decisions. But like, I've never heard anything bad about Caleb himself. And 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 all the ah oh, man, I don't like that he cried in, in his mom's arms after he lost That's the game. Crap. It's like you would too if you put up like a billion points every single week and your shitty defense cost you a chance at a national title. Like, yeah, I'd probably cry too when I was 20. And I gave it my all against Utah and couldn't beat them. Yeah, I don't I don't subscribe to that one. Um, you know, there are other I think more meaningful or relevant oh simeon hey man <laughs> with a seed while he's fading away getting hit it's working in the nuts. it's working like, it's something uh by the way Brees hall is averaging 8.6 yards a carry tonight <laughs> oh is that all yikes <laughs> uh that's that's a great ball like you can't throw that ball any better he literally hit him in the ribs like with a guy half an inch away from his throwing arm like Knowing uh, he was going to get slugged in the ribs. Like, that's it's a great throw. The rumor is not a negative Caleb rumor. The rumor that we're talking about is a Washington rumor about them being interested in Caleb, which, well, yeah, sure. Of course. Of course. of course. Like, he's, let's he's be honest. There. there are 30, no, there are 27 teams that are interested in Caleb. Yeah, probably. Ballpark. Like, yeah, 28 could be 26 could be like fine, but they're about five ish to seven, five to seven teams that are not. And everybody else is like, yes, 100 percent. And don't believe anything else. Yeah. Like, like if he, somebody tells you that like Seattle's set with Gino and they're not interested in Caleb, like no, laugh, no, Caleb your, no way. <laughs> laugh your head off. Like everybody's interested in Caleb. Even the teams with those starters, they're just like, we're not getting them because we've got Josh or Lamar or whatever. Don't tell me those scouts who love football. That's the reason they're in that business. Don't look at Caleb Williams and go, well, you know, if we didn't have Josh, or Lamar, <laughs> like this would be our guy. Um, yeah, he's he's a lot of fun to watch. Miles Garrett. Again. He is. Look at uh, that bend. No, he's a b- fuck? W- with his head getting pushed off his shoulders Dude. by a 300 pounder. Like he's freakish like when we say freak we mean miles garrett like that's that's what we mean um oh oh so close so close i just uh, trevor's like i almost threw another one and he doesn't mean touchdown (laughs) (laughs) uh matthew wright how would you rank the seven different quarterbacks to start for the browns in the last three seasons uh, is this the uh, jersey with like 32 name plates? I mean, in terms uh, of like production and efficiency, like I guess you have to put Flacco number one because nobody else has averaged like 350 yards a game. Um, and then I would probably say Baker. And then who else? So I know Deshaun, PJ Walker, DTR. I guess I put Deshaun three, PJ Walker four. Four DTR five. Who else started? I might switch PJ and DTR, but that's more of a potential e- thing. E- not a production e- yeah, thing. Either, yeah, either either way. Mean, and we are arguing about the fourth or fifth best Browns quarterback <laughs> over the past two seasons. So I can't remember who else who else played for them. Well, a bunch, but yeah. dude, we are talking about ten minutes. Let roughly ten minutes to go in the third quarter. So we've clicked off five six minutes in the third quarter. Browns are up 34 to 17. Yeah. How do you not? Put and they just botched a field goal. So it's going to stay that way. Oh, did it get blocked? Is that a block or just a that shitty a kick? I, well, I think it might've been both. Yeah. I think it might've been a block resulting from a not great process. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, I got to see the, got to see the replay of this. Nope. Okay. Uh, well, it was pretty low. Like that almost hit him in the helmet. Like that was pretty low trajectory for a short kick. Yeah. So normally you kind of get more of a chip we'll, on that. We'll, we'll but... kind of give it a combo, but yeah, it just jets at this point. Just throw your hands up and say jets, jets, jets. What are we? What are we doing here? Thirty-four points. Uh, if the this is from Echo for five dollars, thank you, Echo. If the draft was redone today, does Puka go in the first round? And why do y'all think he fell? Like, what did people miss? First of all, yes, he goes in the first round. Of course, probably goes in the top ten. 
he's going to have like a 1400 yard season as a rookie. Um, yeah. At least, yeah, I would say top 10. They didn't, I don't think they missed anything. What everybody, and this is, this is really odd because we're about to have this debate all over again with another player who played at the same college. <laughs> who? Penix. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, pre-transfer. Yeah. yeah right. So yeah, Penix yeah, yeah. ended up at Washington. Puka started at Washington, went to BYU. I was like, um, who's coming out from BYU this that, year? Uh, exactly. <laughs> a little bit convoluted, but it's, we're going to have yeah. the exact same conversation. Like this guy is a killer. His accuracy is great. We're going to talk about Penix under pressure. We're going to talk about him outside the pocket. Neither are great. If you leave this guy protected in the pocket, kind of like what we saw from Joe Flacco in the first quarter where he's standing in a good pocket, he'll kill you. Like Penix will drive a stake through your heart in those conditions. Can't always guarantee those conditions. A lot of times not for a rookie quarterback, but then there's going to be the injury history. And that's where the similarity to Puka comes in because Puka played great at Washington when he was on the field. He looked great. Trust me. I saw him as a freshman sophomore. I was like, wow, this guy's great. Oh, he's hurt again. Oh, he's hurt again. Transfers to BYU. Starts off hurt, gets healthy, goes on a run. And you're like, dude, this is what we saw at Washington. This is amazing. This guy's going to be great. Gets hurt again. hurt again. You're like, damn it. Goes to the senior bowl, plays two days. Like, man, he's dusting people. Left because he got hurt again. Like, And <laughs> so they didn't miss anything. People just said, look, we can't spend a high pick on a player who's not going to be reliable because availability is the best ability. And if he comes out and balls out for six games and he's out for the year, what good does that do us? So the Rams gambled, and I would say appropriately, commensurately correct pick in terms of that level of tolerance for risk. And he stayed healthy. It was my one wish before the season. I said, if a genie gave me three wishes, one of them I would use on keeping Puka healthy. And who knows? Maybe it's the anti-curse. Maybe they heard me. Maybe the genie actually worked. Puka has stayed healthy and he has ripped off like to much greater heights than I ever figured he would like yeah. a really good season out of Puka to me was like 890 yards and like five touchdowns. I would have been like victory. Yeah, what back, he's done back in June. We both said like, he's their new Robert Woods. They drafted him to be 100%. their new Robert Woods. And that was before we even got to training camp, right? That was hundred percent that we had only done rookie mini camp. Nobody had been talking about him at all. Um, and he's exceeded those expectations because he stayed healthy. And I think the point is, if EJ and I, as inexperienced as we are, can look at Puka's college tape and say, that's Robert Woods, I'm pretty sure all 32 NFL teams looked at him and said, that's Robert Woods as well. But they also looked at the medical sheet and they looked at their doctors scowling in the corner and said, let's go you, somewhere You know else. what they all hoped for? Every single one of them? What? That they'd get him as a UDFA. Well, because the medical sheet was probably so... Sketchy. Right. And they all yeah. just said, dude, like I guarantee that probably 25 scouts who covered BYU were in their respective NFL rooms going, dude, if this kid makes it to UDFA, this is our first call. Like call him in the <laughs> middle of the sixth, give him whatever money we need to give him. Call him yeah. in the middle of the sixth and say, look, if nobody calls you for another round and a half, you're ours. You're common. You get to play with insert great quarterback here. Like, he was, I think, probably like 25 teams thought he's a priority UDFA because nobody's going to touch him with his injury history. Spotty transferred, which used to be seen as more of a thing than it is now or will be going forward because of the portal. Like They were like, oh, we're going to score. We're going to score. We're going to get this kid. Great size, good hands. Like When he's on the field, he's amazing. Yeah, we know about the medical dossier. Like We're going to get him for free. And the Rams were like, nah. <laughs> you're not we got a million Rams, picks <laughs> like 14 picks we're like hey, we got a million <laughs> picks we're gonna pick puka in the middle of the draft and you're all gonna go damn we wanted him for free okay well he'll probably get hurt doesn't matter it'll be a miss for them blah blah like sour grapes all the way around then he comes out and inexplicably stays healthy and freaking goes off like off off uh, Dane for five dollars. Uh, by the way, uh, fumble is over under review in the game. We're in commercial break right now. Kind of looked like it was out, but we'll see. Uh, Dane B for five dollars. Can we just bring Frank Reich back as the Eagles offensive coordinator, please? It can't be that bad. I have more faith in Frank Reich right now than I do in in Sirianni or BJ. So I would say yes. 
please advocate for that. Um, it does seem like they're if they address their staff at all or roles within their staff at all, it'll be in the off season. But you I can't, would, yeah. you can't bring Gannon back as the DC. So who's <laughs> next? Like, yeah. Oh man. The, the Sean decide demotion timing was really weird considering he was on Seattle staff the year before. And, and we know answered, he's a good coach too. Like, right. We know he's somebody, a good coach. Like I get that maybe he doesn't have the respect of a very veteran team in the Eagles in Philly. And there was like, you know, basically this is the equivalent of um, body language for coaches, right? They didn't think he was, uh, you know, like demonstrative enough, like demanding enough, like whatever they said about him. But the week before Seattle, and then somebody replied to me in the comments and said, well, but he never really got Seattle's defense going either. I'm like, no, 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 no. He's on the same staff as Shane Walter and they're in the same room every week. Like, there's some advantage there. Don't tell me there's none. Like he knows the coaches. He knows the tendencies. doesn't matter if he didn't make, you know, Seattle's defense great. He was splitting it with Clint Hurt, right? But like, it's not that he didn't make Seattle's defense great. He knows all the offensive coaches and you're going to demote him the week before you go to play the Seahawks and the Seahawks upset you? Like, like how bad, like just with, you know, the last person said, how bad could it be? Like, <laughs> hold on for one more week. If you're going to demote him, do it after the Seahawks game. Like, hey, you knew all those coaches and you still threw up an air ball on defense. OK, you're done. We're going to demote you and let Patricia call plays. But you do it the week before Seattle. That was so weird. Uh, Shadow Reaper saying this. I was just calling a really bad defense. I don't so disagree. I, I think there's a, a nuanced way to look at it where Desai was calling the defense that he knows and the system that he's comfortable with. But Sean Desai has never had to. And and here's where I'll give Vic Fangio a lot of credit because Vic was, you know, with the Eagles last year, Vic understood how to compensate for the weaknesses of personnel within his system. Um, because he's Vic Fangio. Like that's his, he knows it in and out. He's been doing this for, five decades like he knows what to do if he doesn't have the horses at corner to keep up outside i don't think sean desai has the same tools in his toolbox i.e experience as vic fangio within that type of system to compensate for when the personnel doesn't work and this is an argument we made for another defensive coordinator earlier in this last year 100 100 yeah. you know and again, similar okay. defensive styles, similar coaching. I didn't have that on my bingo card. I'm just going to say that. I did not think I would be comparing Sean to and Joe Barry tonight, but here we are. They and Donatel did the same thing. Oh, Donatel, I actually would have considered. I actually, when we were talking about Joe Barry, Donatel was one of the names on my mind. And I think there's this criticism of the Vic Fangio coaching tree because we look around the league and we see all these quote unquote Vic Fangio disciples that have gotten jobs and then didn't do well and either got demoted or got fired or whatever. And their defenses don't don't perform well. And I think it's not because the Vic Fangio system is bad. Obviously, it's no. not. Or so many coaches around the league wouldn't be studying it for inspiration. It's the fact that Vic has so much experience with calling that style of defense. Yeah. And adapting, like you said, and when adapting. things change, making the adjustments that make it work. Yes, he knows how to massage it around personnel. The other guys that that don't have the same experience don't know how to compensate. Oh, almost. <laughs> oh, no, that was just a replay. It was a replay. <laughs> okay, I thought that was a new play. Uh, but yeah, so again, I think Sean Desai is a good coach, but I think the point I'm trying to say is nobody does it like Vic because it's Vic's system. No. He knows what to do. And it... It is one of those things where guys that get promoted, that is go from being a position coach to a defensive coordinator who come from that tree, typically end up going back to position coach. It's a little bit like the argument we made about New England coaches earlier, but that's more geographical where they leave New England and usually for more responsibility, come back with less responsibility and do okay. With Fangio, same thing, they move, but they would become coordinators typically defensive coordinators and not all of them are great coordinators and that happens with coordinators going to head coaches happens with position coaches going to coordinator like not everybody is great at the next step up 
You might be great at part of it, but you might not be great at everything that the next job requires. I think there's some of that mixed in there too. Uh, Badger again for $10. Thank you, Badger. Uh, it's a local Badger. Follow up on the AP slash Raiders thing. Do you think they could trade up to get Jaden Daniels? Is it enough of a connection to justify a trade up? Uh, so right now they're sitting at the 13th pick. We're pretty sure that there's going to be three quarterbacks within the top six. Like at least the top six. They have to jump. Actually, the Giants moved up to five, so they have to jump the Giants at five, which means they have to get to New England. New England's only going to move back if Caleb May and Marvin are off the board. And even then, they might take Jaden Daniels. So depending on how they're coaching. Shakes yeah, out. depending on, on who's going to be the coach and everything like that. So, okay, 13 to four for a quarterback. Ouch. Very expensive. We're looking for the at the third at least quarterback in the draft. So you better be really sure. And, and as a guy that really likes Jaden Daniels, Based on his tape this year, that's still going to be rich. You better be real sure. Yes. It's it's basically the same thing that Houston gave up to go back up for Will Anderson, but it's going to be more because it's going to be quarterback. quarterback. Yeah. You know, so we're looking at multiple ones, multiple twos. Maybe, a, yeah. you know, going to be going to be a rough cost. It's and a, it's a lot. Yeah. I mean, the the Raiders don't have. um I'm just thinking of teams that have like uh, the Jets, for instance, the team on the TV tonight, right? Um, they would have, it would be more difficult for them to do that. Just having done that recently with Zach Wilson, like spending a very high pick, like, oh, now you're going to dump a bunch more picks in. Are you sure? Did you see what happened with the last one? Raiders don't really have that hanging over their head, but anytime you move that many assets, especially for a quarterback, and really, honestly, any quarterback, like it's always, mm -hmm. we've seen what's happened to the Jets. Like if the Jets did something else, if the Jets were playing Joe Flacco at this point, would they be better than largely the entire Zach Wilson experiment? Probably. Well, I get, I don't know with that offensive line, who knows, but <laughs> can't, yeah, I might've gotten line. killed, <laughs> yeah. but you know, anytime you make a, a pick at quarterback and typically a high pick, I mean, I'm not talking about third and fourth and fifth round quarterbacks. I'm talking about, high second or anywhere in the first and they're you know they're the starter they're the guy they're the anointed ones um it's it's a high consequence move it'll get you fired in the nfl it has to work and very few places get to pick two if your first one bombs out and the next one you pick is not good like that's that and some some don't even get the second pick like so, I'm just you made the pick. It was bad. We're in a bad spot. You're done. Uh, Zachary Kreitz or Kreitz. I never actually got a pronunciation on that. Uh, for five dollars, thank you, Zach. Uh, where do you think Russ ends up next year? I personally want full chaos. Bring him back to Seattle now that they've decided to draft well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that would that would go over That's well. That's full chaos. That, that is locker room. That is the slider all the way to ten. I I would I could see. Oh, boy. Um, okay, let's say. Let's just pretend that, uh, you know, he's a free agent and that they're not going to trade him, but that they're going to release him. Because sometimes with these reports, it's like, oh, he's going to get released. And yeah, that's they're just to up get somebody on the phone. Yep. Right. Let's let's just say that it's going to be a release and not a trade, which means Russ can choose where he wants to go. Sure. And everybody's on the table for that. Right considering that the Raiders are at 13 and they're not mathematically eliminated. Like they need basically, let's see, they need Houston to lose. They need Pittsburgh to lose. They, <laughs> they need, they need like four AFC teams to lose this week. And then they could potentially play themselves in next week uh, with a win. Um, so they're not, they're not mathematically eliminated. It's just, they need a lot of things to go right. So they're probably going to end up in the teens. Let's just say it's 13. For me, if I'm the Raiders, if I'm not super enthusiastic about what I've seen from Aiden O'Connell or if I'm not super enthusiastic about Bo Nix or whatever, if I can do a safe conservative, like we are not locked in for more than a year type deal with Russ to get us through this next year, then we use the 13th pick on something else that we really, really need. I could see that uh, now. 
does the Russ image fit Vegas at all? <laughs> Not really, <laughs> but but if they're desperate, I could see that. Yeah. <laughs> God, Becton, Becton got killed again. Jesus. Uh, he's, he's given up like 10 pressures tonight. They're just like, I think they're just like doing Rochambeau in the Browns <laughs> defensive huddle for like yeah. who gets to rush from the, from the right edge because like the, everybody wants a shot at this point, which, you know, that's just goes to show you. We were, we both like Mackay Becton coming out. We both thought he was a really good tackle prospect and yeah, not right now. Like he is not playing great football right now. And the NFL is a meritocracy. He's getting whooped regular. So I, Russ, it's really interesting. It's like one of the places I could see him going again, depending on how things go and, and shake out, you know, is New Orleans, but it's never going to happen because New Orleans is Sean Payton South and Sean Payton just jettisoned him. There's no way that, you know, Dennis Allen, if he keeps his job and they somehow get rid of Carr, goes, oh yeah, give me, give me Payton's leftovers that he kicked to the curb. Um, you know, by all reports in a very, um, direct way behind the scenes, like, Hey man, you ain't going to be here. We're going to take your money. Like, sit down like it, it was not it was a hostile takeover it was not friendly we're gonna borrow your playing time we've got a really you know outstanding rookie or anything it was, this was not a delicate coaching conversation this was a dude you ain't cutting it we ain't paying you like lawyers got involved fuck like, off like yeah, that's, that's kind of what you're saying here um yeah. and not surprising given you know some of peyton's comments earlier in the season when he really went out there a couple of times uh maybe a little bit farther uh trying to establish that it was his team and his culture and whatever else but there's no way that new orleans is going to take on that baggage given the relationship very close relationship between peyton and the existing staff in, in New Orleans. Yeah, Plus, they have Peyton, the, Peyton would tell them, like, don't do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, and already has. Like, that's that's not going to occur. Uh, but just from a, like, personnel fit, it would be interesting to see if Russ could revive his career there. And again, New Orleans has to do something with Carr, which is going to be not equally difficult uh, as getting rid of Russ because Russ was kind of a max contract, if you're talking in NBA language. Like, it was pretty pretty topped out it's pretty per, pretty heavy um in terms of cost so yeah, a lot of people are saying Steelers you know uh, if I'm the Steelers I'd rather take a swing at fields than Russ at this point I would rather take a swing at fields or uh some other players I think in the draft that you know maybe Bo Nix like if the Steelers want to keep kind of being in the middle I don't think they do at quarterback but that's kind of what they've done I mean, the Mason Rudolph's of the world, the Kenny Pickett's of the world. They, they haven't taken a big swing at quarterback. Even Pickett wasn't necessarily a big swing. So middle of, you know, his first quarterback taken, but he was middle of the first round hometown kid. Like there's a lot of things that leaned into that that were not like, oh, this is our guy of the future. They might've said that, but organizationally, that's not what they did. So don't listen to what they say. Look at what they do and what they pay for. Um, so if they wanted to sort of, see if they could run that strategy back. Now it hasn't worked for them very well. I could see like Bo Nix being a stealer. Like that would be a fit for me. And I think I would rather at this point, take a shot at that than trying to, you know, rehabilitate Russ. Like Russ has shown the last couple of years now. And the NFL is most certainly a, what have you done for me lately league? Like he's not the same guy. Like he's, he's going to have some of those plays in him. He had more of them in him this year, but Again, you're not going to consistently see Russ at the level that you did during that 10 plus run, 10 plus year run in Seattle. Uh, Travis rolls to five dollars. So hell of a game to go to last week to do some Puka Takua scouting. Uh, yes, I was at uh, I was at Rams, New Orleans a week ago tonight. And uh, it, it just I was watching Puka intently because I'm working on a Puka episode. And he did whatever he wanted in that game. And I've I've noticed him get more comfortable as the season's gone on lining up outside the numbers as like a true X, you know, beating mm -hmm. press, getting vertical down the field. That was like the one thing early in the year where they didn't really have him do it that much because they, they, they kind of wanted to ease him in. It's like, okay, you're going to be our inside guy. You're going to be, you know, doing a whole bunch of choice routes and you're going to be running shallow crosses and, you know, a billion stick routes. And you're going to be the guy that beats zone coverage with Matt and you're oh. going to read the field and he's going to read the field. And ooh, God, Joe fucking a, that was 
dangerous. That was Ninjoku's down there somewhere. That is exactly yes. what that play was. Literally, and three like jets around him. Yeah, and Sauce was one of them. Like yeah. that is a ballsy throw. And yeah, yeah don't defender. Do watch the defender come over the back at the end. I'm not sure this was an interference, but I think the refs were like, "Dude, he threw it into three jerseys." Yeah, that's we're not really. Gonna, we're not going to reward that. <laughs> I, oh man, hell of a speed I, turn from Sauce to come off that too. By the way, I understand the refs keeping the flag in their pocket. There, we've seen it come out for a lot less this season. Let's yeah. just say that. Um. Oh, darn! Yeah. great play, DJ Reed. They decided to go on the other side and pick on DJ Reed. He said, "Nah." It's um, impressive. Overall, though, back to Puka. Finish my point on that. They've expanded his role throughout the season. He's not just the zone beater anymore. He's also the man beater outside, um, which is kind of the same progression that we saw from Cooper Cup, except they're just accelerating it with Puka. Yeah. And and now he's doing everything. And they had to because they didn't expect Cup to miss as much miss as much time as he did this year. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's another just sort of fortuitous piece of Oh, fit landing God. spot Adam wide open what's the yeah, flag there's though? a flag I don't know what the flag's for but yeah he had Tillman W -A -O. like nobody was within 15 yards of him WAO and it's on defense uh, yeah looks like on it. Reed who had it oh man cornerback you got to have the shortest memory in the history of sports <laughs> like last play you're on top of the world you're manning up against Tillman you knock the pass away right at the point of attack here you basically mug him, get the flag. You almost yeah. got bailed out by I mean, an overthrow. Shit, yeah, but that's, that, you could call you, that OPI. You, you, you kind of, you could, <laughs> but you also that was a pretty good. Like we're just gonna have a war. Yeah, and you know I don't threw him like ten yards. <laughs> and I don't doubt that you know both sides are like, well, hey, like Sauce just went over and Joku's back pretty good, and they kept the flag in their pocket. Hey, game's on. Like we can we can NBA rebound down here and they're not going to throw a flag. So let's do it. Um, and that's going to, you know, if it goes for both sides again, let them play. I'm all for it, but just be consistent with that. If you're going to let them mug each other, then everybody gets to mug each other. Uh, oh man, I saw it. Max had one. There we go. Max Robbins for $5 Monterey. That's my neck of the woods. If you need any restaurant slash fun recommendations next time you're around here, I'm happy to provide also free my boy, Kate Jesus. Um, fun fact. So my, my dad's side of the family, EJ, I don't know how familiar you are with central California or uh, north, northern. So, well, we were talking about this uh, pre stream last time I was in Napa was a thing for when my wife was working for a company that was headquartered in Emeryville, but they tended to do things out and about in central California. So they did stuff in yeah. Napa. They did stuff in Monterey. Like, yeah, my, my whole dad's side of the family's uh, from Salinas. If you know yep. where Salinas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, spent a lot of my childhood up in this general area. Uh, this is my first time. So this, this is actually, a bad look for me. I've lived in California my entire <laughs> life. I'm 32. I had never driven up the one through Big Sur until oh, yesterday. It's really? the first time I ever did it. Yeah. Gorgeous. E even on a cloudy day, I was like, oh, it's oh my God. Showing <laughs> off. It's showing off. <laughs> it's insane there. It's Gorgeous insane. stretch of road. Yeah. Gorgeous. I've stretch. still never been to Redwood. Um, oh, okay. I just drove also, over the Golden Gate Bridge today for the first time in my life. I know you I'm, I'm a bad oh, California. Right. You just took the picture. No, you just took the picture last time. You I took the picture. Over. I never drove over it. Okay. All drove right. over no. it the first time today. Yeah. The uh the first time I was down in San Francisco and like had a car that I could do whatever I wanted with. It wasn't, you know, a rental or whatever it was. Uh I went to visit my cousin because her uh they weren't married yet, I think. Uh her now husband was uh doing work at Stanford's so there in Palo Alto. So we mm -hmm. went down and hung, hung out with them for a little bit for New Year's many years ago. Uh, and then um, we, you know, bombed around San Francisco and I was like, we're driving across the Golden Gate just to do it. Like I want to go to Marin too, but like, we're just, <laughs> we're just doing it to do it. We're basically driving out and back and we're going to hang out in Marin for a little bit, but um, yeah, it's a good time. It's beautiful up here overall. Gorgeous, gorgeous part of the country for sure. <laughs> Uh, are we still on the Jordan Love is good train? Uh, this is from Christian Watson enthusiast for two dollars. 
uh yeah we just don't know how much <laughs> yeah it could be it's like oh yeah he's good or oh he's good you know yeah it's some different. it's some variation of good could be from anywhere from about 18th in the league to like top 10 yeah yeah we, we don't I mean, know it's, yet. it's somewhere on that slider and the consistency's not there yet so we're not comfortable sort of throwing those numbers around uh but he he ain't bad like he's not ass there there are guys playing quarterback in the nfl right now that are that are ass as nfl quarterbacks <laughs> as, and, as far as the sliding scale of yeah NFL and he's not one of them like yeah. he is he is better than that for sure now it's a question of how good and how consistent he can be uh jeff this for two dollars only reason not to like caleb is high short quarterback yeah so when i was standing next to him at the pro day he was a I, I kind of clocked him like in the six ish range. Like he's not a, he's not a six, three guy. Well, he's not a towering Cause, dude. Cause I'm not a six, three guy. <laughs> and I was sitting right next to him. I was like, okay, you're probably about my height. Like you know, six foot, maybe, maybe six, one, like I'm six, one and a half. Depending say, on you're not six, three, but you're not six foot either. <laughs> no, but like, you know, I couldn't, I didn't look down to see what shoes he was wearing and I can't remember sure. what shoes I was wearing. That can, that can affect things a lot. So I was like, I don't know. You're somewhere in the ballpark. You're not Kyler. Yeah. But you're also not, we're not uh, going to be having the Bryce discussions, but we're yeah. not going to be like, Oh, by the way, he's six, six. <laughs> I, I, I will say, um, even if he was that short, he's so thick that like, I still wouldn't be having the Bryce discussion with him anyway. Cause like he's way heavier than Bryce. Yeah. His build you know? is not one. Actually. I think a lot of people are going to be surprised that he's not six, two, six, three, because he yeah. is very solidly built and he looks well proportioned and people just, I think assume like, Hey, he's playing with a lot of like tall offensive linemen out there. And like, he doesn't come off as a small quarterback. He might be short. If you're talking about, like straight up hype, but he's not small. He's not no. small. Uh, Justin Womp for five dollars. I guess I should rephrase. If the commies want to want two for Caleb Williams slash Drake May, uh, how much does it cost to outbid the Pats or whoever else? Also, is London Fletcher Hall of Fame? Uh, London's going to get in, but it's probably going to be from the senior committee. Yeah, I would agree. Um, as for how much is it? How much is going to cost to jump? Well, as of right now, they're in front of New England, but we'll see where it is at the end of the weekend. Let's say let's say they're at four and New England's at three. So you got to get up to two. How much would it cost to go from four to two, considering it's for a quarterback? You're gonna have to give up probably next year's one. And that's if it's a team that doesn't need a like let's say it's Arizona <laughs> yeah. two, right? Yeah. Somebody that Arizona, doesn't rightfully do it because they don't yeah. need a quarterback of their own. Yeah. Arizona's at two right now. And so Arizona's saying, okay, if we leave two and we go down to four, we're not getting Marvin. So you got to make it worth our while that we're not getting Marvin, which means give us your one next year. We'll take Malik neighbors at four. You get Malik neighbors plus another one. Like that's kind of how Arizona operates is, is, Hey, we got the picks, make it worth our while. They did the same thing to Houston last year. And they're just going to kind of keep that train rolling and just have an extra first round pick as, as many years in a row as they can. Um, so that's I would say you offer the one if they say no and they want like a one and two, you say get bent and go from there. I'm having a terrible influence on you, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're Western or middle. What, what's that New York region you're from called? It's oh, not Southern Tier. Yeah, no, Southern Tier. It's just north of Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was, That's what you all say. To be <laughs> fair to everybody from Pennsylvania, I was born in Pennsylvania. Um, uh, but no, I mean, the, the get bad thing. <laughs> he was such a, yeah, I'm sure your mom's like, he was such a nice boy. I mean, you got that EJ character. Uh, like, you're not giving us our one next year. Get bent. Click. <laughs> Uh, I thought he was like six three. Yeah, I know he looks like he is, but he's not. Yeah, that's the thing is you don't look at him and go, "Oh, he's short." Uh, you look at him and go, "Oh, he's well portioned. He's, yeah, he's fine, you know, yeah. solid athlete, right?" And then you go, "Oh, he's not six three. Like he's not six two. No, he's neither of those things. But he's not five ten or five eleven either." And you know, we're not going to be having the Bryce discussions. We're not going to be having the Kyler discussions, um, because. 
yeah, very solidly built, very good athlete. Um, and you know, a tremendous arm, like tremendous oh, crazy arm. arm, crazy. So arm. a lot of that's just going to go like, and yeah, I think, you know, shadow reaper, there's going to be a lot of folks saying exactly what you're saying when they dig into it. And they're gonna be like, is that wrong? You know, when he gets measured at the combine and stuff and he comes out at like six foot and a half inch or whatever, or maybe six one or whatever, people are gonna be like, What? He looks like he's six three. Like he's he's a big dude. Well, he is a big dude. He's not necessarily a tall dude. They help Makai Becton, please. I I think at this point it's the whipping post. I really think that they're just like, go out and get beat. We're not because clearly they're not helping him. It's like so they're bad. just not helping him. And I, it almost feels like they're saying um, kind of like the opposite of what, uh, well, not the opposite, but opposite side of the ball from what like college coaches said about how they handled sauce Gardner, some of them like, Oh no, we just put a sacrificial dude over there. <laughs> we just told him you're going to run like three miles today. We're never throwing you the ball. Uh, forget it. You're just out and you're just going to occupy that side of the field because we're not throwing over there. It kind of feels like they're like, Makai, you're going one on one. We're not giving you any help, and we know you're going to get beat. And we're just going the other way, like, and it's not working out for them. And they're not adjusting. I thought be the best speed bump you can be. <laughs> kind of feels like their approach right now. I'm not going to lie. Oh, I think good. Matthew nailed it. it. Here's the thing. I thought for just a second there, just a second, there was a little flicker about eight minutes ago. Where I was like, oh, halftime adjustments. Like, there could be a swing here. Jets got a stop. They got another stop. They could go on it. And then I was like, oh, yeah, Trevor Simeon. They're not going on anything. Like, another <laughs> false start. Are you kidding me? Like, they're, they're not going on anything. There's no halftime adjustments. Your halftime adjustment is go buy a new quarterback. You can't do it because the guy they keep showing in the hats not coming back this year, despite the fact he said, keep a roster spot. I'm coming back. Um, it, it, like, all those, like, Aaron Rodgers isn't walking through that door. He's not. He's already in the building, uh, but he's not going to help you at all. So if if Trevor Simeon is your answer, you came into this game. We came into this game knowing what we thought they were going to get. Quite frankly, 17 is more, but a lot of that's on Jermaine Johnson for being like all world amazing at defensive end. Um, you know, without those seven, yeah, 10 points. If you told me that Trevor Simeon led Jets team came up with 10 points on offense, I'd be like, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, sounds all right. Seem, yeah. Against nothing. Cleveland. Yeah. Math, math seems to check out. I don't see any problem with that. Um, so, you know, you get what you get and you don't get upset. If you roll Trevor Simeon out there, you're not expecting to beat most teams. Certainly not this Browns team. Now, again, the first three Jets drives Browns defense didn't look like the Browns defense first three Browns drives Jets defense didn't look like the Jets defense Jets defense hasn't bowed up a ton they made some plays certainly we've seen some plays in corner and we just talked about Jermaine Johnson we had Q with one big stop down the red zone other than that they haven't given up any more points since the half it's been a whole quarter oh, okay. I'll take it. all right that's you know if you're calling it a zero zero ball game at half which it wasn't Good for you. You haven't allowed anymore. You've stopped the bleeding. Neat. Uh, you. This is the same old Jet story that we've seen all year. You're not going to score any points. So what does it matter? Like you can you can go play shutout ball all you want, but you gave up 34. So you're not getting those back. Casper uh, Salari for two dollars. Do you think the NFC playoff teams change at all? Just to recap for those who don't know. Uh, right now, first seed is San Francisco. Second seed is Philly. They're both 11-4, but San Francisco holds the tiebreaker. Third right. seed is Detroit at 11 and four. Also, uh, fourth seed is Tampa at eight and seven. Fifth seed is Dallas. Sixth is the Rams. Seventh is Seattle. You got Minnesota yeah. knocking on the door, sort of. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Starting Jared Hall, so maybe it's some kind of a small knock. Hey, uh, they're at NFC seven Offensive eight. Player of the Week. If predictions from <laughs> listeners are to be believed, they are one of four teams at seven and eight. The others also being Green Bay, um, Atlanta. And New Orleans, I, I would like to say that any of the NFC South teams could overcome a one game deficit with two to go, but I don't think they can. So let's call Tampa not a lock, but like half turned. Um, and then Minnesota. Can Minnesota? So they play Green Bay this week. So effectively, that's going to eliminate one of them. 
Yep. Um, I would have more faith in Green Bay than I do in Minnesota. So let's say Green Bay then has to go and host a very, very good Bears defense in the last week to even have a shot. They have to run the table and hope that uh, Seattle loses. Seattle plays against Arizona. No, not Arizona. That's the Eagles. Who's Seattle play? Uh, Pittsburgh. And then who's their last uh, at Arizona? Okay, so they do play Arizona. I, I don't know. That's a tall order. And then the Rams, I don't think I don't think they're gonna catch the Rams either. Because the Rams, depending on what happens uh with San Francisco, like they might be sitting their starters in the last week, and then the Rams can just kind of run the table for the rest of the year, end up at like nine and eight. Um, and make the playoffs there. So I I would say it's a sixty percent chance no. They don't change. Forty percent, yes, and even then, it would be like one team. Ho ho! Oh, Pierre Strong siding. Let's go. Yeah, I was gonna say, talk about guys where the situation we thought it matched, and then it just didn't match, right? With his draft spot, or you know, where he landed when he got the pros. Let's put it that way. Um, and now. <laughs> <laughs> like you get to a team that really understands line play and how to run the ball and you get to play for Kevin Stefanski, like you're going to see whatever he has, like whatever Pierre strong has is going to get shown in this offense. Uh, if it doesn't get shown here, he, he didn't have it at a pro. Yeah. League. He obviously yeah. had it at South Dakota state. Um, but uh, yeah, that's one of those guys that made one of the better shifts in the league in terms of like, they didn't quite figure it out. We thought they were gonna. We really thought. Oh, he fumbled. Fuck. Is that complete? Oh shit, Pierre. Pierre, come on now. Uh, I thought that play was over when he stepped towards the sideline. I started talking about South Dakota State and just absolutely got it blasted. See, Helmet. real time, right real on time the ball. curse. What a curse! Yep. Right on the ball. Ooh, and then he got bent in half on that tackle. Yikes. Jets defense does not play around physically. Like, there's some tough dudes on that defense. When we were doing shot of the week last year, like, every week, like, yeah. Williams was every week on that defense. It's like, man, again. He kind of got bent awkwardly on that. He really got bent over. His head got turned. That was an ugly little sort of ending to that after the fumble. Um, which is not very typical, but yeah, that was not a pretty end to that run. He's he's kind of sorting out that he's got all his parts left. He's limping, oh, which oh I would yeah, do. He's, he, I he's, just that'd rip my leg out of the socket if I took that hit. <laughs> yeah, that was not a pretty end to that play. I mean, after the fumble, which obviously wasn't pretty, anyways. PK Ron says Pat's trade for Fields and draft Marvin Harrison Jr. plus free agent wide receiver. Um, Who's the coach? <laughs> that's that's my question. It was like, who's the coach? Who, who's who's developing? I, I could love system? that. I could love that a lot. Like I could certainly be swayed to be interested in that offense. Tell me who's tell me who's running it. Like tell I'm me who's pulling a, the a, a Bobby Slowick situation. I'm, yeah. Okay. Sure. Sign me up. You know. I we'll would see. be very interested. Um, now, as a Texans fan, I'd be distraught if we lost Bobby, but still. Of course. Well, that's probably going to happen pretty soon. Again, Shut he up. could go. Yeah, you, you and the Mike McDonald fans <laughs> from the Ravens. Ooh, ooh, look at the Ravens defense. Yes, look go, at them. Go, They're go great. Kill that guy. <laughs> right. Isn't Mike McDonald awesome? <laughs> oh, did you see the absolute duck that Simeon just threw for a nice completion? <laughs> Hey, it's man. like the third Sh duck. shows up in the box score, baby. I'm telling you, it's a third duck he's thrown tonight that's worked out perfectly. There's somebody that's going to win a fantasy championship because they played uh, Garrett Wilson and got that catch. So somebody out there is <laughs> somebody oh, yeah. celebrating wildly. Uh, I I don't know. 11 19 left in the fourth quarter. It just doesn't feel like the Jets have horsepower. Oh, to, dude, once they went to, down like 14, they were done. No, I mean, I for every piece of my brain that goes, oh, they could equalize, I go, Trevor Simeon. Damn it. <laughs> no, no, they can't. Stop it. No, like, stop it. Um, as fun as that would be, uh, and as representative uh, of the back half of the NFL season as that would be, like, I, sorry, Jess fans, and we know many of them. 
No, Ooh, he's I, short. I don't think so. Yes. All right. Most, run up to the line. Most certainly Here. short. You got to go now. You got to catch him with pace. Let's go. Okay. We're just going to lollygag it. Sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, your, your tone reminds me completely of the oh. uh, chef's reactions account on Twitter. Oh, you're going to use the garlic? Sure. Nice. Okay, yeah. if we're if we're calling a sneak and short yardage, can we fucking hustle and try to catch him? Like you, you it, are we're, again we're, we're, we're just gonna we're gonna let them just load up. We're, like we're gonna let them get in their stance, get set, dig in your feet. Like, come on, man! If that's the call, everybody should know ahead of time. Like, hey, if we're in short yardage, we go. And you got, I mean. You got Elliot and Tomlinson and Siaki Ika and Miles Garrett up there, and they're like, nah, like, nah. Like, half the reason why the Eagles are so good at it is because they all know when they get in a short yardage what yeah. they're doing, and so they, they use pace to their advantage. Yeah. Look at look at Garrett Wilson, man. I'm not much for... And Garrett Wilson... I'm going to preface this comment with Garrett Wilson has been a damn saint this year. If you went through professionally what Garrett Wilson has gone through this year, you would have said some shit. Like everybody would have said some shit. Uh, and he well deserves to just taking off his helmet, looking at the sky coming out. Like he is just like, yeah, he's like Cancun, please. Now, like, come on. Yeah, they're like, lucky the I, transfer portal doesn't exist or he'd be gone tomorrow. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> and honestly, you're going to see more of that in the NFL. You're going to see that trickle up to the NFL and guys, uh, guys already have guys have already said like, I'm leaving. Like I'm not playing hold ins, like all the, all the things that guys are trying to do. You're going to see more of it. You're going to see them flat out. Just say, no, I'm not. I'm my career short. I'm not playing for you. And, and some teams will hold the hard line and other teams. Most other teams will do what teams have done. Yeah, they got him on too many men. No way. Yeah. But did they throw the flag? Yeah, they threw the red challenge flag. Oh, uh, oh first my god, time. that's rugged. That's not great, dude. Not again. You that we were off the field. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Crazy. You can't keep giving Trevor Simeon chances. Sorry. <laughs> you couldn't even and, get it out. <laughs> nope. Nope. I tried. They're leaving too much time for Trevor Simeon. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I, I'm like, go ahead. Uh, you know, it's not great. I'm not wild about it from just a discipline standpoint. But like, I don't care. And I don't think they do either. Oh, man. Yeah. At this point, and of course, there's an injury at this point. I just want both teams to get out without anybody getting injured. Cause it doesn't hardly seem worth it at this point. Yeah. I mean, game. they already lost Elijah Moore today, which I, so yeah. chat, chat, are we, is it concussion protocol? Do, do they say what it was with Elijah? It looked like a, a, some sort of, some kind of head injury, but I mean, he did walk off with like three trainers, which is pretty typical for concussion protocol stuff. Uh, but he did walk off under his own power. Um, which is good, but no, haven't haven't seen, heard. And we know Amari's out with the heel. Um, let's see who else got injured today. Pierre <laughs> Strong looked like he got a little bit dinged up, but yeah, for sure. Uh, who's walking off? Sixty-five. Is that uh, just need some more breeze points while you're going? God Xavier willing, you're going to get them. Also hurt. Uh, that's the guy that just walked off for the Jets. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Went to the blue tent. Did walk off under his own power. But do the Jets cut Lazard or does he get to stay with Rodgers? I don't know. Aaron, Aaron's their GM at this point. So I'd ask him. Uh, yeah. No, he can't. If it was up to me, no, Lazard's not there in 2024. But I, it's not up to me. It's up to Aaron. It was so funny. All the, all the Packers fans were like, yeah, we get to see. Aaron be happy and he gets Lazard. Lazard's amazing. Just you wait. And I was like, I don't know. It, it, there was two different types of Packers fans. There was the nihilist Packers fan that knew exactly how this was going to go in New York. 
And then there's the other Packers fans that were like, I had a, the, the, a anti, the anti Gutekunst Packers fans that were like, oh, now you'll see. <laughs> like, I had a I don't lot know. of Packers fans in my mansion telling me how many yards Lazard was going to put up. And look, I don't have any doubt that if Aaron was healthy for the entire year, that Lazard would have had another like, at least 10 artificially inflated <laughs> year uh, playing with a Hall of Famer. Like, at, you know, I think Lazard is a good, just, just good wide receiver and so many people are convinced that he's like i've had packers fans argue with me oh he's borderline hall of fame and i'm like lazard uh-huh yeah no, not they rational were, they were not they were not they were not serious people yeah yeah hall of fame not. for what <laughs> yeah like you know northern minnesota hall of fame like i don't i don't know um no i you know again Aaron Rodgers has elevated talent around him. This is, you know, from the fan of a team that currently employs Tunyon. Um, you know, and again, I had people telling me that Tunyon was a top five tight end in the league the year he had all the touchdowns. And I was like, mm, no, that's not true. <laughs> he is getting a lot of touchdowns. And yes, he plays with Aaron Rodgers. And that's awesome. Uh, he is not a top five tight end in the league in, in any stretch of the imagination. I, I don't think that's true. There is a halo effect around Aaron Rodgers, and rightfully so. He's a Hall of Fame player, and he has elevated a lot of talent. Um, Tanyan, Lazard, Cobb to a certain extent, uh, but that does not make those players like first rate awesome. It makes them beneficiaries of playing with a Hall of Fame talent. Wow, the Browns came really close to blocking that like i think the guy actually overran it so yeah i hope oh can't hear you there we go okay all right i walked off really <laughs> there's a there's a vent in the hallway of this hotel that i swear to god sounds exactly like my wife saying brett and i was like is she stuck outside <laughs> no but no it's dude just... that's kind of spooky <laughs> i know <laughs> uh no i assumed that she just forgot her key or something and you had to let her in but no i was just waxing non-poetically about the many packers who uh aaron Rodgers has rightfully elevated to you know high level playing status who as soon as they are removed from the rogers halo are not going to look anything near as as good. And Lazard certainly fits in that category. Tunyon fits in that category. Like there, there are many. Cobb to a certain extent. Um, you know, they're not going to. They're not bad. They're not out of the NFL, but they are not players that you're going to be. You know, leveraging your future for or paying top rate free agency contracts for. They are beneficiaries of playing with a Hall of Famer. He made them look really, really good because he can make almost anybody look really, really good and did for years in Green Bay. Doesn't make them great players. Makes them very fortunate to have played with somebody who is really awesome at throwing the football. Robert Tanyan might be Eric Ebron. <laughs> well, I haven't, Maybe. Heard Eric, I haven't heard Eric Ebron in a while. Maybe. Yeah, I, I had arguments <laughs> about that one too. But um, yeah, not not great like he's a he's a good player but he's like a good te3 like he's a good te3 and that is a that's a valuable commodity he's still in the nfl he's still employable absolutely he can give you some reps he's not all world and the year he had whatever it was 11 touchdowns or whatever people were like oh he's a second goal. he's i had people saying he's top five tight end regardless and i was like nah he's really not uh tom for five dollars thank you tom gents i'm at a hockey game but i have to ask why are there people thinking the bears will get a first rounder for fields they're delusional delusional bears fans yep that think they're going to get a first rounder for fields they are not at mm -hmm. most they're getting a two that's yeah we've had this absolutely. we've had this conversation quietly between the two of us for months and more, more likely a three by the it's way. yeah we're we're pretty set on three and if they get two, good on polls like great job like that's like Brandon Bean saying that Trubisky would marry his daughter. Like yeah. that is a first rate NFL. I don't want to say con job because that sort of cast aspersions about Justin Fields not being good. No, it's just value, right? With what he's achieved. And with how two, many years he has left on his deal, which is like at most. Two, 
yeah, two would be desperation from another team to say, yeah. hey, we have no other options. We fully believe in Justin. And that'd be great for the Bears. Trust me, as a Bears fan, I would love it. And if it's a good situation, I would love it for Justin. That's cool. Is that likely? No, that's best case scenario for the Bears. Uh, more likely, it's a three. Speaking of Kazra Solari, who says, thoughts about Seahawks trading for Justin Fields. Again, if it's a two or a three... But Most I, likely I just for, don't for the, for the Seahawks. It would be a three because they're not desperate. I just don't see it. It's not their it's not their style. Like he doesn't bring the same things that they built their offense with Geno around. That they even try to continue when Drew Locke is on the field. Like he Justin is a different archetype completely. Like you you don't get to keep the majority of what you're doing. Who the, the offense that I think like if we're just talking about coaches that we know are going to be there next year, mm. right? Because I, I that's why I'm ruling out Atlanta because like Arthur Smith's probably not going to be there. Um, yeah. Coaches that we know are going to be there. I, I would say the offense that he fits the best that is a potential trade target is probably New York with Dable because yeah. all the same stuff that Dable did to weaponize Daniel Jones's mobility where they, where they were leading the league in bootlegs, right? Because and Josh. And and Josh, right? Because, you know, we're, we're leading the league in bootlegs because it's literally you cut the field in half, you're reading one, two, three. Hey, if not, anybody no. that leads the league in bootlegs, we're a fan of. And we love Dable for that. Good for the brand. Great for the brand. Even. Great for the brand. But Justin would do all the same things that Daniel Jones does, but better. Oh, it, yeah, it's, it's I when we talk about like rich man's poor man. Like, yeah, yeah. Justin Fields is like a billionaire's Daniel Jones if you're talking about <laughs> running ability. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I I think that Dave would have a lot of fun with Justin. I really do. Now. Still got to build more there with New York, which is why. Yeah. You know, this is if there was ever a time to trade for a quarterback and then use their existing assets to improve the offensive line, improve the weapons, everything like that. This is probably the time to do that. Um, but in the absence of using that fifth pick on Jaden Daniels, instead, if you use the fifth pick on a tackle and just say, and eh, we're not <laughs> sure about this Evan Neal thing. And then you use a three on Justin. It makes a lot of sense for me, more more than the Seahawks, at least. Yeah, I, I don't see the Seahawks as stylistically as a fit if they're going to keep Waldron, and, and Waldron's had a bunch of success. Um, now, there certainly voices from Seahawks fandom, especially through the middle of the year, who were many of the same voices that were, uh, you know, cheering him in the beginning of the year, like were calling for his head in, you know, the middle months, uh, like just saying what, why he's lost his touch. Like, again, it's, it's up or down. It's on or off. You're great or you're out of town. Um, but in terms of the offense they built, like Justin's not going to do a lot of the things well that they have built their offensive foundation with Gino around and, and count on Gino to do, they count on Gino's timing and accuracy, especially in the mid range. That hasn't been Justin's strong suit. Like you yeah. would be trying to shove a round peg in a square hole. You'd have to change significantly. And then quarterback run game is largely non-existent with Gino. If you don't have a quarterback run game and you're counting on mid range precision, like Justin's not the guy you want for that. You're going to build a different offense. Uh, Jeff Mendelson for $5. Do you think the Steelers roll with Rudolph? If he wins against the Seahawks slash, how long do you think they roll it? If he keeps winning through the playoffs? I mean, I, I guess, yeah. But like, the, even if I they mean, make what the else playoffs, are you gonna do? You're not going back to Trubisky. Like, yeah. Pickett is broke. We'll see how broke and whether or not he comes back. If he got a hot hand, I would probably say no. You don't change it, but that's only because. But like, do you, do you expect the Steelers? Let's just say it's Mason or Ken, whoever. Do you expect the Steelers, as they're currently constructed, to get past the wild card round? No. No. No, so it's like, not. does it, does, does it really it matter? matter? <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> like it's the old adage, right? If you have two quarterbacks, you don't like, like they have three quarterbacks. 
are all kind of playing at the same level. Yeah. Some are better than others at some things, but overall, you have three quarterbacks. You don't have one. Yeah. At least, yeah. And, and the fact that there's a discussion between Mason Rudolph and Kenny Pickett tells you where they're at. And, and I, again, I don't think they're going to replace Kenny in this draft because they're the Steelers, but they should strongly consider it. Oh, okay. Oh, a priest just got fed his own teeth. Yep. J OK. J OK. Absolute missile coming out of the middle of the Cleveland defense. And that is a straight up rib shot. That is, oh, I mean, rib, shoulder, whatever you want to call it. Like, he read Whoa. that play just as well. He knew he was there just after the ball. Oh, Ben's in the booth. Nice. Oh, is that Kirk's dog? That is Kirk's. That is oh, Kirk's dog. Oh, look at that good boy. That is a very good boy. He travels <laughs> everywhere with him. He is apparently oh, an emotional great. support animal, and uh, he has most of the prime crew wrapped around his finger, as you would expect. Of course. Yeah. How could you not? Yeah, no. Ben's, Ben's a goodest boy. Now, my dogs hopefully don't hear that and come running down. <laughs> start scratching at the What'd door. What'd you say? <laughs> be like, yo, yo, dad. You say a lot of things on these live streams, but look, you're selling us out? <laughs> don't do not do that. Now, they had a very good Christmas. They. Uh, what, what, you what'd know. you get? What'd you get, Huddy? Uh, well, bacon. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Bacon. His favorite, like, favorite gift, yeah. They get, they get bacon for coming in in the morning now because uh, my wife, who does not eat bacon, found some prepackaged breakfast sandwiches that she really likes, but she just pulls the bacon off and then she has the egg and the cheese. Uh, and the, there you go. And the bun. So there's always like fresh bacon for the dog. So they've they've come to be like, <laughs> I'll come to the gate if there's bacon. And not just bacon, bacon with a hint of cheese on it. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're, they're all about it. Like they're they're very happy pups. They uh, they just had their checkup yesterday. Both are doing well. Uh, you know, their annual checkup deal and. You know, they, again, charm the vet. So it's always a always a happy day. All right. Send me on fourth and six. I mean, the game's basically over, but still, this is like the game here. <laughs> Did, didn't we say that in the second quarter? <laughs> no, pretty much. We should have. Uh, oh, I thought he was going to get crushed. I don't think he made it, though. I don't think yeah, he made short. it, but I thought he was going to get lit up because he was not giving himself up. I yeah, I think that oh, I'm surprised the Browns defender Wait, missed him. Look at right Simeon's, there. I Simeon's holding up four. Did he think that was third down? I'm okay. Show me that replay again. I want to see where the knee comes down. I was looking at the ball. I was why was bad. he holding up a four? Did he think that that was third down? I don't I don't know. I'm not sure. Like I would love to <laughs> I would love to say that I understand the process of Trevor Simeon, but I do not understand the process of Trevor Simeon. Yeah, they're short. Yeah, no. It, I think the knee came down before he crossed the marker. The ball definitely came down after the marker, but the knee came down before. I just want to know why he was. Okay, there's. Okay, knees down right there, and then he extends the ball another like full yard. Yeah, so, yeah, he's yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was short. It's a good call. Yeah, because knees down right. There he's well short. It's a good but, spot. It's a great he, spot. He popped up immediately, like he was going to go run another play, and then he's holding up his finger. Like I don't think he knew what down it was. <laughs> yeah, buddy, that's strike four. Uh, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> that's really bad. Uh, yeah, it's like strike three, and the guy you know stands back, knocks off his cleats, steps back up into the batter's box, and they're like. <laughs> Did you very, did very you Tom Brady? Us? That's strike three. Yeah, yeah. That's strike three. I know. I want another one. Yeah, not happening. So yeah. Brown's back at it, trying to grind clock. Both teams kind of in the we don't want to be here mode at this point. Yeah. Five minutes left in a late December contest. Uh, you know, one team having bit doubled up the score of the other team. Nope, nobody really wants to be here anymore. Like this is yeah, this is over. Um yeah, we'll see. Do they still uh, make the refs make that kicking motion at the kickoff? I don't think they do. I think we have we've gotten rid of that ignominy in the past. So. Like, little ref has to go. Err. 
like the, I don't know. Did you ever play uh, the football game with the with the vibrating metal board where you? Set oh yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. was nonsensical, little, but I loved it, it as a kid. Yeah, it's terror. It's it's a brutal game, but like my cousin and I got an endless fights about that game. But the kicker in that game was the little guy you stood up in front of that tiny little foam football and tried to like uh-huh. completely useless, right? <laughs> Didn't work we modified we modified the rules to use paper footballs. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to use paper footballs, but you had to do twice the distance. So oh, you that's fold your own little paper Dude. football because the little kicker that that guy got discarded. That, was <laughs> that little foam football had no carrying ability. Assassinated ape says Rusta Pit continue nine eight hell. Yeah, that sounds that honestly sounds more like a Steelers move than anything else. Oh god. Yeah, and it, that's the thing is anybody that at this point who watched the last two years of Russ and believes that he is going to be anything really other than a slightly polished version of that, of what you've seen over the past two years is kidding themselves. They're that's delusional thinking. Like he is what he is at this point. He can be a solid middle to lower middle of the pack NFL quarterback kind of at best. He'll have a couple flashes He's not the guy that's going to make the fourth quarter magic, win you a bunch of games, uh, come from behind. Like, yeah, I saw that, Curtis. <laughs> I I meant to mention it the last time that Joku had a reception, which was just a couple minutes ago. And it was like, dude, again, here we go. Like, hey, throw the ball to the guy that's really good. Throw the ball to the guy that's getting hey, a million all, yards. All and I'm then they just, the, all and then they just 128 yards. <laughs> yeah. And then they just stopped. Yeah. Which is weird because if you hadn't noticed, like their offense stalled at the same time. Yeah. Like you could say it's because more went out, more had a couple of big catches before he left. Um, you know, but like you stop throwing to uh, I'm not even gonna say it's essentially you stop throwing to your number one receiver because Amari's out with the heel. Like we said very clearly, Joku's number two on this team. Well, Coop's out, so he is the de facto number one. You stopped throwing to your de facto number one, who was crushing this defense in the first half, absolutely tearing them apart. And your offense went stall, punt, punt. You haven't scored a point since the half. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> it reminds me, it's like the the run rules where teams just the teams that like totally forget the run like the bills over large portions of the last two years where they're like, Oh yeah. You had eight rushing attempts. Like, oh yeah. We can do uh, that. We can attack. Right. The and they start Let's running do all of it against Dallas in one week and skew the stats. How about that? <laughs> they start having successes. Like, wait, like what happened to not just feed? It's not like they sat in Joku, right? It's not like they were like, Oh, save him, protect him. We need him for the playoffs. That would be something else entirely. No, he's been out there the whole time. You just did it. Okay. Hey, 34 points, baby. (laughs) Wins a win. (laughs) Uh, You know, it's not like, but if that's the case, just sit him, man. He's obviously wide receiver one. Cooper's banged up. Like, because Cooper's banged up, he's wide receiver one. But like, hey, if number one's banged up and you're up by, you know, you for the most part, for all the non-garbage time, you've been doubling up the Jets. Like, sit him. Like, you know, play your backups. Who cares? Just stay healthy. That's yeah, but if you're going to leave him in there and not throw to him, I'm like, what's the point? What are you doing? You're up by a ton. You're not giving him any more stats. You're just exposing him to injury. Like, what's what's the point again? Uh, JJ says, what's stronger, Coleman Curse or Mike Tomlin voodoo? Um, see, I kind of feel like the Coleman Curse and the Mike Tomlin the Col- voodoo kind of coalesced this year. They, that they I, pull I, from the same energy, the same dark. I, I had, I had very there. high expectations. You know this. I had very high expectations. And I think my curse is what is what limited them from reaching those high expectations. But the Mike Tomlin voodoo then kind of tag team with it and kept them uh, painfully mid. And so, so now, they could, yeah, now they're they not have, bad they enough to actually yep. make any meaningful changes but they're not good enough to ever reach the heights that I thought they could reach. So they're in purgatory now. Like they're the definition of a purgatory team. Like put it in the fucking dictionary purgatory. JJP, he ensured their purgatory status is is in here. 
So that, I actually saying. like that explanation a lot because it means I don't have to go against Mike Tomlin, which is just a <laughs> rule in life. Like I yeah. just don't want to go against Mike Tomlin, period. Uh, playoff stream question mark. Um, well, let's see. Mm, we'll see. Um, this, this is the last TNF stream, obviously, because there's no more TNF games. Yeah. So playoffs, like we're going to be in Frisco during championship round. Yeah, we can't do that one. Like that, that that's a definite no. Like we're, we're working at that time. We don't have the ability to do that. We're like interviewing guys as yeah. those round of games go off. Um, the first round, I, I don't well, think it's possible. The we, wild card round and the yeah. division round, we're getting ready to go out to Frisco. We might have so. a like random wild hair wild card stream or, or playoff game stream but what we really need to do and we are going to commit to right now with everybody sitting here we need to have a patron stream we are way behind with yes. our patron q a streams and we're going to do that first like we're going to find a time won't won't be during games because what would be the point um you know we will find a time that is not during games and we will have a patron q a stream we we have been remiss and we need to get back to it. Um, so we're going to do that first. We're going to say we're going to do that before we're going to do any like playoff game streams, which will be a little more seat of our pants. Who knows? We might get bored, be in the same place, be like, hey, the game's on. Like, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, other than that, we will pick a time. We will not do that for the patron stream because we want to give as many people a chance to attend that one as possible. Uh, we know everybody, they, we have fans all over the world. It's impossible to pick a time that's perfect for everybody and for everybody to be off work and be available and whatever else. But we do want to give some lead time. Um, and it won't be the only one. We're not just going to do one and done. We need to get back in the habit of doing those regularly. But the first step to that is start. <laughs> do the first one. Also want to make one more note here since underdog pays all of our bills. Heck yeah. If you are here and you would love to find a way to support the show, in addition to having some fun while watching said playoff games, uh, yes. playoff best ball is live right now. So if you had a really shitty fantasy year and you kind of want to do over with fantasy, you could play you best ball. Clean slate, <laughs> totally <laughs> clean, clean slate. slate. And really, it just comes down to how good you are at predicting playoff matchups and who's actually going to advance to the playoffs because the people who win playoff best ball tournaments are the ones who basically predict who's going to go to the Super Bowl. So if right. you have a pretty good handle on who's going to the chip, uh, you yourself can either win a lot of money in the playoff best ball tournaments or if you just want to play with your friends in like a little like private, you know, three man, four man, six man league. Uh, playoff best ball is open at underdog. Anytime you guys sign up on Underdog with promo code bootleg, not only will you get a $100 uh, deposit match, you're also going to get access to a free special for signing up. Uh, tonight, Steph Curry, but on Sunday, it's going to be Dak. Uh, over half a yard? Yeah, it's like over half yeah. a yard passing. Yep, so yep. It's essentially a free space in Pick'ems. Um, and anytime you guys do sign up on Underdog, it directly benefits the show because uh, we we get all the benefits of, of you guys signing up and it uh, helps us keep this whole thing afloat, afloat financially. And we appreciate all of you uh, that have stuck with us during this entire stream um, because we do this for you guys. Again, I'm in a hotel room in Napa uh, right now <laughs> uh, for, for my wife's birthday. And, and uh, she uh, very graciously allowed me four hours to do this stream. And I appreciate you guys uh, being here for our last last tnf of the season and we also appreciate underdog for sponsoring all these streams and heck yeah and if you had a terrible best ball year like fade yourself <laughs> just do the opposite <laughs> of the bad yeah. things you did and say i'm not going to make those mistakes again you'll probably win some playoff best ball so give it a shot it's a fun way to do it i, I love the suggestion of leagues with your friends like small private leagues with like however many you got four five six those can be really fun pretty intense uh depending again on if you get it right and, you know, you either pick a surprise team that was not supposed to win, not favored to win, and they go uh, and they get an extra game. That can be the difference. It can put you over the hump. So it's a super fun way to play. Uh, guy with no vowel says, last TNF, any favorite games or thoughts about year two? Uh, oh, year wow. two, meaning like year two of this, these TNF streams? This, yeah, year, this being the second year of TNF streams. Um, boy, there have been a lot of... Mm been a lot of fun streams some terrible games but some of our <laughs> it's it's inverse relationship right some of the worst games have been some of the best streams um and i i think that's the thing that sort of sticks with me is like 
I didn't think when we talked about starting these a couple of years ago, I was like, what are we going to do on those dog games when those like, games are just awful? <laughs> this one. Yeah. Not nobody. I, I don't think was looking forward to this as a, you know, a Jets game with a Trevor Simeon start, but like the amount of people that that have stuck with us, that have showed up, that have enjoyed those dreams and said, Hey, I had a good time. Even though the game was terrible. And I mean, we've had like 800 some people in a just dog stream for like yeah. three and a half quarters. Like the majority that just speaks to like how much you're invested in this and us doing this. Um, that's probably my, like, there's a lot of really cool game moments and memories and whatever else, but like, Looking up in the third, you know, the deep third quarter of an absolute blowout and seeing, you know, 500, 600, 700, 800 people hanging out with us, um, asking questions, being engaged, laughing along with whatever hijinks we're putting on. That's that's strong stuff. It's good stuff. We are hoping now it won't be for TNF because Amazon owns, owns the right to TNF and they've already explicitly told us like. <laughs> being, being they were able to very nice about the it. They did not say get bent, but they yeah, also didn't say they basically said it. like showing the game, like because of how basically the lawyer said no of us being able to have our own alternate broadcast where we, where we could show the game on Twitch. Yes, our um, own version of Manning Cast on yeah. Twitch was got xed with how everything's drawn up. We can't do that for TNF. However, however, because. The creator pass program now exists between the NFL and YouTube because of the partnership with Sunday Ticket. My goal is to eventually be able to do um, streams on on Sundays where we can. Again, I don't think it'll be for primetime games because all those all those rights are different. Um, but my goal is to be able to do streams on Sundays at some point where. Uh, where we can show those games because this is on YouTube and Sunday tickets on YouTube. Like there's probably a way to eventually do that. It's not this year because it's the first year of all this shit being together and like nobody yeah. knows what we're doing. Um, but I have to imagine that is that is the end game here because the NFL, if you hadn't noticed, <laughs> the NFL has leaned really hard into creators this year and into yep. supporting creators in what we do and giving us resources, giving us tools, giving us access to stuff we never had access before. Like we're going to the combine on the NFL's dime this year. And that's not normal. Like that's new. That's a whole new yeah, world. That, <laughs> that is not where it's been previously. Let's just put Yes. That. So they are investing in creators, which means I think in the future it will be possible for us to kind of do our own alternate broadcast within I don't know if it'll be within YouTube TV or how that's going to mesh between Sunday ticket and YouTube and YouTube. I, I don't know how it's going to work, it, but I, that's my long-term goal. And I've brought it up to some people on both sides and they've both thought, wow, that sounds really cool. We have no idea how that's possible, right. but, we, but that sounds really cool. A lot of <laughs> steps between A and C. We got to figure out B, but you know, they weren't opposed, which again, when we ran this up, like, when we started this, uh, it was with the intention to be able to show the game as a as an alternate broadcast like the Manning Cast uh, with Amazon. That didn't work out. We still did the streams because we wanted to prove the concept and we wanted to show people that there was an audience here that was invested and you all showing up does that every week. Um, so it's another way that you all support us and, and give us um, weight when we go into these discussions about what comes in the future. And they go, well, have you done it? And we're like, hey, for the last two years, these are our numbers. These are, you know, this is what we've been able to pull. This is the engagement that we can show and promise you moving forward. And maybe even more if we get to show the game. So that is a real chip. Like that is a real thing that we get to talk about when we talk to any potential partners moving forward to do different things with live streams is we've done two years of live streams. They've been really successful. Um, they bring a lot of eyeballs in and we have a good time doing it. So we can say, yeah, been there, done that. Um, I'm trying to, I think Brown's clinched the playoffs tonight, right? With 11 wins. Like, I don't think there's any way they can get knocked out. Right. With 11 uh, wins. 
Yeah, it looks like they officially know, clinch yeah. playoff berth. Yeah, second time in the last 21 years. How about that? Go Browns. Good for them. Huge, huge for Stefanski and his staff. Again, we talked about it at the top of the broadcast with all the challenges they've had on the roster, especially with the quarterbacks. Um, that you can't look at the job that Stefanski and the Browns have done and where they're at right now and not just be thoroughly impressed. Jared says, Brett, don't you curse us in the playoffs? Hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me, let me look in the camera for this one. The Browns are going to win the Super Bowl. They're going to win their first playoff game oh, by two no. touchdowns. Oh, no. Jared, he's not going to forgive you. Love you, you Jared. That. He is not going <laughs> to forgive you for that. Oh, that's this, that's the unfiltered juju right there. That's that's, <laughs> that's just great, well, that's sawing off the barrel of the shotgun. Straight just, yeah. stuff from the bottle. Like, <laughs> no, nope, we're not diluting it at all. We're going straight shots. Oh wow, that's right. Thank you, Brett. As a Ravens fan, hold on, hold on. Oh no. Oh, don't the you Ravens do it. are going to win the it. Super Bowl? Oh god, damn. they are going to beat the Browns by two touchdowns in the playoffs. Hold on. What, what are the other AFC teams? Let me, let me just create a curse hurricane. Yeah. A curse a cane. Did you here. have to do it to the Ravens? Come on, man. <laughs> just told people that the Ravens were a good pick in playoff best ball. And here you go, stomping all over our own garden. Nice Dolphins. job. Hold on. The Dolphins are going to win the Super Bowl. Tua will throw 500 yards in the wild card round. You know that a certain uh, mutual acquaintance of ours is going to throw daggers in your direction, Lamar. <laughs> Brett, please reverse curse the Chiefs. Hold on. Kadarius Tony will get 200 yards receiving uh, in the wild card round. <laughs> now that I would just actually <laughs> laugh at because um, that would be again that would be the capper of the the turnabout storyline in the nfl Kadarius tony who in the early early games of this year and several times since to be perfectly fair has completely failed the casey fan base uh yeah Ooh, rough well game is officially over now which means it's about that time EJ. we have done it we have gotten through another slate of tnf games some of them great some of them terrible but again we got to spend them all with you that's a win in my book um happy new year be safe uh whatever your version of safe is i'm not here to legislate your activities <laughs> just come back with all your fingers we appreciate you as you are uh keep breathing we'll call it good reminder we don't have any other podcast this week but we do have two next week wait is new year's on monday i believe so I think okay. that's well, true. fun fact. My wife's birthday is on Monday, so we'll record on Tuesday. Yeah, and we'll record on Tuesday. that one out right Maybe now. <laughs> a little bit later than normal would be my guess. Uh, yeah. yeah. So we'll record on the second. That'll come out third or maybe early fourth. And then we'll probably record again on the third. Uh, and that one will come out on the fifth when it yeah. does. And if you guys have any ideas for topics, uh, just leave them not in the chat, but leave them in the comments on this stream. We'll go back through later. We'll look at ideas for topics. Let us know what you want to talk about. And uh, we will see you at some point next week. Absolutely.